Okay. Welcome, 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 one and all, to yet another episode of WIC TV, a cross-ideological space where we come together to talk about issues both political and cultural, from the silly to the serious. Gang, I know we're starting a little late. The women were late, right? Um, That's just, they feel it's okay to be late. But that's okay. We're going to get into it. It's going to be fun. And today, we're going to be talking about women's entitlement. Do they think they deserve more than they deserve? Recently, I read an article... And I'm going to read a couple passages from that just briefly to kind of set the stage. One of this, uh, and this was a on an article in a, a book published about 2008. It was based on this article. This is what it says. It's hard as a woman not to have drilled into you the notion that no matter how objectively ordinary you may be, somehow you deserve to be with the creme de la creme of male companionship. Do men get this kind of advice? You deserve to be with a supermodel. You deserve to get blowjobs every day. You deserve to be with a woman who will fly around the country and go to football games with you. Not as much. But for women, it seems that desire has become the new deserve. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So without further ado, let's uh, toss the ball to Elder Drazi and we'll get started. Elder Drazi, what you got? All right. I actually have uh, prepared... Uh opening statement here uh in the wake of this new progressive era we have declared god to be dead and with the death of god we have cast off the shackles of the old and while men grew stronger having cast the weight of the chains aside the women have painted their chains gold and wore them not on their hands and feet but rather around their necks and unfortunately it has cut off circulation to some crucial areas of the brain women who follow this idea that they deserve exactly what they want in a partner tend to seek out the material desires and appearance they want from a man and then work backwards from there. <clears throat> when the guy ends up being less than what they had in mind, they inevitably break up, and the idea that I deserve better is reinforced. To quote the great poet of our time, Bo Burnham, I won't settle for less than perfect. We want perfect children, a perfect life, a perfect husband, or a perfect wife, but deep down we know we don't deserve it. If you want love, lower your expectations a few because Prince Charming would never settle for you. If you want love, just pick a guy and love him. And if he's got a thing for feet, say, fuck it, sweep me off him. I yield my time. Poetry, gang. Poetry. Thanks for being here, Elder Drazi. I guess we'll see how it goes. Next up, we have the one, the only, queen of the fairies herself, Fairy Queen. What you got for us? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to try to keep this brief. Um, I've, I've heard people complain, um, within these spaces about women's entitlement in regards to dating and sexuality. Um, and I'm here to, and I want to, I thought about this metaphor today as I was prepping for our conversation and because we often use the metaphor of the dating market. We think about the, we think about sex and sexuality and marriage. It's often discussed in, in terms of market economics. So to push the metaphor even further than it usually is. I wanted to use this as a metaphor to explain why I disagree with Elder Drazi and Smith. Um, imagine for a minute that you live as a neighbor in a neighborhood, and down the road, you have a friend whose name is Molly, and Molly has a beautiful house. It's a unique little house. She's spent years painting it. She's put painted little gold birds in the bathroom. She has special doorknobs. She has a garden that she's pruned for years, cherry trees, the works. Um, Martha wants to sell her house. But as Martha's trying to sell her house, she has two people that she wants. She's trying to sell her house to a handsome man who has a good job, who's very nice, but she's not really sure if she wants the house. Or there's a second man who comes to her door and says, you know, the price for this house is way too high. I know you think that these gold birds in your big backyard is so special and so wonderful, but really, as a, as a homeowner, I don't really care about that. In fact, most house buyers don't care about your garden or the doorknobs or the little gold birds that you painted in your bathroom. And really, you would be happier if you just sold your house to me at this price instead of waiting for this extraordinary price for somebody else to buy your house. And so I want you to think about what you want as the neighbor to Molly. Do you want Molly to sell her house to the man that is beleaguering her front doorstep, telling her how much her house sucks and how she should really devalue the house and sell it for a lower price? Do you, would that be, how does that benefit you? Because here's what will happen. If Molly sells her house to person B, 
then the if then what happens is not only is her house value devalued, your house is also devalued. And not just your house, but the value of every other house that is on that neighborhood street is also devalued because now you've sold that house for a lower price than like what you than what she actually believed it was worth. Mm-hmm. And so I, we, we can, and I, I want to lean into like this metaphor and we could talk about it more, but I think that what Elder Drazi and what Smith, I don't know what Smith is going to say, but at least what Elder Drazi has said like uh, tonight, I don't think that it's merely bad because I think it's because it's bad for women's personal happiness as you like looking for a dating partner. I think it's bad for women in general and for society in general across the board for women to be less picky and less choosy. Okay, thank you for that. Hey, as long as I get to play in the Big Backyard, I'm good. Okay, we love Big Backyards here. But thanks for being here, Fairy Queen. We'll get into it as we go. Next up, Smith. Go ahead. Right. <clears throat> I agree. Uh, I think it is bad for women to be less picky and less choosy, and it's good for them to be more picky. And I don't think it's good for men. I think it's bad for men. Uh, I think that women are... This whole des- uh, this, the whole concept of who deserves what is uh, not it's just a very abstract doesn't mean anything. But in the reality, women the sm- the large gametes have a lot more power in the reproductive choice process, um, and because of that power, it is leveraged in a way that makes men feel like shit. And a lot of men grow a lot of resentment because of this. And I think it is the source of a lot of misogyny and hatred towards women and resentment. And uh, I I don't like it. Uh, it makes me feel bad. I don't want to. So I think one of the the biggest problems for women uh, in society at large is the competition that men uh, have amongst each other. We're constantly uh, like when when we make society to get rid of rape, we should rape is one side of of a two sided coin where. Rape and male competition are the two parts of a solution to a reproductive problem. And we've only gotten rid of one of that. And we've kept, we, we, we don't, we don't care about leaving men into the, uh, in this, in this lifestyle of perpetual toil and struggle and, uh, and fighting just to get access to a woman so that she can spend your money or do whatever the fuck. So yeah, I, I just, uh, I think that it is, uh, it would be bad for women to stop being so picky and leveraging their sex, but also it would free them up to have other priorities other than their sexual value. Um, and I mean, potentially could be good for them, but yeah, in, in, in any obvious way, it's going to be bad for them. And I still, I still advocate for that. Okay. Start us. Go ahead. What you got? Okay, um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing for women to be picky. In fact, I think our very survival depends on it. When you look at the crime statistics uh, between men and women, uh, I'm sorry to say, but men seem to uh, carry out a vast majority of violent crimes, whether that is murder, homicide, um, uh, whether that's rape, whether that's assault. Um, so yes, um, as a woman, you should be picky and, and I, I, we can say that women should be settling, uh, all we want, but how many women do you know who've been ready to settle down with a partner and that partner themselves is not ready to settle down? Like the, it's a very, very common occurrence. So either you've got dudes who are, uh, willing to set who, sorry, not willing people who are unwilling to settle down, who are willing to string a girl along for like seven, eight years. Um, while never putting the ring on her finger. And you've got a bunch of single women who are navigating a dating sphere with a bunch of dudes who are statistically are much uh, more likely to uh, to rape them and kill them than they are in reverse, right? Like, let's be real. There is a biological difference between males and females. Males on average are stronger. They are, males on average are, um, are, are uh, better at fighting. Um, and males on average, for some reason, are perverted. They're into the most perverted shit. Um, oh. They are uh, into, um, they, they, I don't know why they have to fight with each other all the time. You can say, oh, men are expendable, all of that. Who's the one who created that problem for men? Other men. That's your answer. Um, so, uh, yeah, women have to be picky. This whole don't be picky thing. Well, if we stop being picky, then a whole lot more of us are going to end up dead in ditches. So that's my thought on this one. 
Well, we're going for the extremes right off the bat. Gang, we're going to open this up. Go ahead. If you got thoughts, uh, if you can't get in for whatever reason, just raise your hand and I'll try to get you in. But floor's open. Go ahead. The only reason that we think that women are not horny is because they have to withhold this information, not only just from other people, but from themselves. We don't, we don't teach them to even embrace or express or consider their sexuality because their sexuality is something that has to be welled and damned, dammed up because been behind that dam is a fucking raging river of fucking sexuality that that has to be trickled out with a with a very delicate faucet because if it comes out at all men will fucking jump at it because we're in constant competition we're we're fucking so eager to get that attention and that sexual attention from women that just the slightest bit will make a man go insane and that's you the don't world think that women are horny I, I absolutely do think they're horny I, I just said i think that there's a raging river of, of horniness that is dammed up that Sorry, we, I thought we, you started with the reason why we don't think that women are horny. Yeah, is because they have to repress it to protect themselves from men. Oh. We don't teach them how to be sexual people. We don't encourage it. Um, they, they're like women don't even know how to like masturbate well. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess noted, but I guess well, it's I want not intuitive. Yeah, I want to. I want to redirect a little bit. Um, and 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 ask right. Uh, with the rising rates of unhappiness across the board, right? With the rising rates of loneliness across the board, right? Um, should women settle more? Like, uh, I, I run into a lot of women who who uh, who will who will tell me this, right? That they can't find anyone worth their time, right? Uh, but then when you dig into it, turns out they have three or four guys that are more than willing to get with them. They just don't want those specific guys they want something else so would it be good to lower our standards women what do you think no i think that the loneliness problem that men are talking about is something that women have always had there's always been a loneliness problem for women we just accepted it as status quo so for women what our loneliness is is that we still, even though we have entered the workforce, we still do the brunt of the household work, the domestic labor. We still do the brunt of the child rearing. And on top of that, we're working equal amount of hours as our male counterparts, even though we're not getting as paid as much as them usually because we take off more time um, uh, to, to deal with domestic duties, ironically. Um, so yeah, we can talk about it, but like men have an average of like, I think it's something like 10 more hours of free time per week than their female counterparts when they're in a marriage. Um, women I have seen move countries, move cities, move states to go be with their with their male partner, leave all their family behind. Um, that was the, the tradition for a huge part of uh, human history was for women to be given away by her family to the family of the man she's marrying. And guess what? She's not going to see her family very much anymore. You didn't think you're, there was a loneliness problem then? So you're there saying there probably that, was. Are you um, saying and, that marriage and, is now, bad? And, and today, today, women more than uh, women are, you know, have more rights than ever. Women are sharing more uh, domestic labor than ever with their male counterparts. And we're still getting the raw end of the deal. We're still dealing with the fact that we still are doing the brunt of the domestic work, the brunt of the child rearing, the brunt of all these other things. And our male counterpart gets to come home and drink a beer and watch TV when he comes home. Um, uh, and, yeah, don't even get me started on stay at home mom. So go ahead. This is kind of silly. So part of the like a lot of what you're describing right now is women not feeling entitled to the correct thing, which should be negotiation power in a relationship. So if you're doing all this extra work, you should be uh, feeling entitled to have a voice in your relationship. And you probably shouldn't be, uh, you should probably should be drawing the line. At, I don't want to be in a relationship where I have no voice, where I can't negotiate. I should feel safe to negotiate. I agree this, I think, you. is a pretty easy bar to clear if this is something that you're looking for. But when you have all of these standards, which you're trying to meet, like he has to be like, uh, have these physical characteristics like he has to be like X amount attractive, however you want to word that. He has to make X amount of money. And I have to be able to have this kind of negotiation power. You're setting yourself up to find a very narrow set oh. of people. And then in addition to that as well, they also are going to have to uh, like want to be with you. Uh, I just think that okay. uh, sacrificing Here, me... some of the more superficial aspects of what you're looking for in favor of something that we might call love would probably okay. be, uh, if you want to consider that settling, this is, uh, 
I think that this is probably where you need to cut some of these losses at. Okay. So okay, I, if I can, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Fairy Queen, sorry. So I just wanted to talk about each of these things. So when you say <laughs> Elder Drazi, that you think that like women are entitled, um, they have an inappropriate sense to what they're entitled to. So it's not inappropriate to be, to feel like you need to have negotiating power in a relationship. I think we can all agree. I think that's something that you are yeah, entitled to, regardless of gender, like if you're in a relationship. That's what so, I said, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, and, yeah. I, and, I would, and I would agree with you. I'm just, I'm just clarifying. So I would agree. So the specific and types of entitlement that you think are inappropriate that women have in today are a heightened care for physical characteristics and materialistic objects. So money. No, no, no. It's it's having it's holding all of these values and saying like all these values so have what are to the be values? met simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So in or, somebody who's emotionally mature, uh, okay. to the point to where um, you can have you can feel safe having negotiating power, uh, financial uh, like not even just like stability. It seems like financial uh, uh, like exuberant success financially, um, like above above average appearance. Um, and then whatever kinds of uh, like character traits of masculinity that you specifically uh, find attractive as well. You're, you're narrowing the field down more and more and more. And I think ultimately uh, not being able to uh, cut some of these uh, less important th that are going to end up being less important to you when, uh, you know, when a family member dies and you need somebody to be there for you or to live your life with day to day. Uh, I think that this just going to mean that you're going to spend more time lonely and you're gonna uh right. well but but if i can respond to that like a couple of things yeah, and then we, so. then we need to get uh smash and stardust in so yeah yeah so i just wanted to respond to a couple of things so the first one is above average <sighs> appearance i could be yeah. wrong but i'm pretty sure that there are plenty of stats that show that men tend to care more about physical appearance in comparison to women women are more likely to date physically unattractive like partners as opposed to men men are more likely to value physical beauty and physical characteristics as opposed to women. So if you're going to Wait, say- this isn't saying, I didn't say that men shouldn't do this as well. I'm talking, well, we're here to talk well, specifically about what I understand, women I understand, I, under, I understand, but like, well, you understand, but because the, the title of the show is women's entitlement in dating, we're looking for things that are specific to women. Like they are especially entitled. So if you're going to talk about physical characteristics, we have to acknowledge that both men and women, it seems, First of all, both seem to feel entitled, to, like men even more so in comparison to women, to having a physically attractive partner. So if you're going to call that out as a particularly bad thing about women, that doesn't seem to be true. It seems to be more true for men as it compared to women. It's holding it in. It's holding it alongside all of these things, and I'm saying that this is one of the things. Well, let's that you talk about the other things to too. Cut. Well, but just to be clear, just to plant a flag, right? Like just right here. So above average appearance, men are more likely to value that in comparison to women. Um, finally. The other three things. So emotional maturity. We can really delve into like what you mean when you say that, but I don't think that telling women to value having an emotionally mature partner, that seems like a weird thing to say that you're too entitled if you want that. I think that it probably would be actively bad to tell women, to tell anyone, to tell men or women that you should settle for an emotionally immature partner for a couple of reasons. One of them is, as Star has mentioned yeah, earlier- I understand. I'm I was just, just saying. All these I, I think, I I, 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 I'm going through each of the thing. criteria. I think we specifically. can all agree that's a good thing to want to have a yes. mature partner. That's one I of the under... things that I'm saying. These are the one of the things you should. These are one of the things that should be a primary focus. Well, he's, well, I understand. Uh, he's he's just what he's saying. I'm not saying necessarily, but he's saying that women are entitled. They 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 feel entitled to the wrong things, and which are what to too too many things all at the same time. And that some losses need to be cut somewhere if you don't want to end up being lonely. Just some data. Just some data. Um, they've done studies on this. They've asked both women and men to list what do you want, uh, in a partner. Like, what are your desires? What what are your uh, what are the things that you're looking for? Women's lists are far longer than men's lists. Yes, but right. what are the in a yeah, but things are, on that we list? are in danger way more than males are. Let's be real, right? It's not we just are, that. You we, also just have the power more. You also you we also do have are more important re reproductively. Danger, you genuinely biologically are. have more power. Uh, yeah, men biologically have more power, but also no, men, no, women, women are. 
in oh, the oh, sexual selection. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, you mean like you mean in sexual selection? But when it yes. comes to physical strength, men are stronger. Men um, are pose more of a danger to women than um, than women do to men. Right? Yeah. Even when we get if we cho if we're choosing a partner to be with, we are also choosing somebody who to be with us and to protect us while we are in the most vulnerable parts of our lives when we get pregnant. And let me tell you guys, domestic violence usually starts for the first time when a woman gets pregnant. There's statistics on this. It is crazy. There's a, a, there's a huge amount of evidence to show that for some reason, when women get pregnant, domestic violence either starts or escalates if it was already happening. And it escalates Nobody's saying that that should be part of the want, calculation. Why don't women want to date men in wheelchairs then? I mean, this is a facetious because they want they, because when you're looking for security, you're you're not you're not you're not looking specific just for security. You need and him that to be he's able to going... fight off the other men that are going to come to rape you. Yeah, exactly. You you don't need somebody who is not going anymore. to fucking kill you. No, somebody who's not going going to kill you, and somebody who can who can also pull their weight in the relationship while you are in your most vulnerable state in your life. And yeah, fight off other I'm men. Saying, like like a, a guy a guy in a wheelchair with a decent job or whatever, and he's like not like ugly or whatever. He's just a normal guy. He's a decent guy, but he's just in a wheelchair. You're gonna want to date him way less. Um, I mean, I mean, under, I understand you're not gonna have as good sex. You're not being able to be able to, mm -hmm. to do things together as much. I understand. Yeah, but, is he gonna be able to help you? But it's not because it's not because the, it's the protection. You don't need the man to really. You can just get it. You should. What you 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 shouldn't depend on your man to protect. You should get a gun. You really should. Okay. Uh, I'm going uh, to uh, just real quick. I am going to prioritize super chats today because I'm trying to make enough money to get Dragon's Dogma two tonight. So if you want to give me money to get Dragon's Dogma two tonight, please consider super chatting. So I'm going to prioritize prioritize those. Let me read them off. Two dollars from Tesco Johnson. Notice there are three men and two women. Sexist. Thank you for the two dollars. And ten dollars from the Observing Ataku. Stardust, your gender has the opportunity most of the time to get a dependable guy, but most squander it for the feminist lie or someone who is much more valuable than they are. You're privileged. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let me okay, just ask. Wonderful. Can I just ask a question? So I, there are a couple of things that like I really want to respond to, like what you're saying, Elder Drazi. So what you're saying is it's not just one of these different traits; it's all of them in connection, right? But which is fine. But I would say two things to that. One, it's too much. Okay, essentially, well, is my argument. Uh, okay, well, a couple of things, right? So number one, because we are the sex that assumes most of the risk, like in terms of pregnancy, assumes most of the risk is more likely to become single, that we are more likely to be single parents. We are, we take on the physical burden of pregnancy in the first place. It makes sense for us to want to be choosier. And not only that, if you're going to say that we should be less choosy, uh, you've mentioned loneliness as an example. But whose loneliness? Men's loneliness? Society's no. loneliness? Okay, women's okay. loneliness? The specific woman I... who's being too picky to find a person well, but to hang be on. with. Can I, get, so can I jump women, in here? Women, you ask, you're asking well, me but, the question. Well, but like, okay, the reason I'm asking you this, right? As I understand it, in comparison to women, men are far more lonely in comparison to women. Would okay, you agree sure, with that? I'm talk That's probably the case, but I'm specifically talking about do do I think that women are too entitled? And when we're talking about the kinds so of women that are in be... the example piece, if you have all of these things, yeah, you're probably going to end up being single. And if it is a priority for you to have a family, to uh, especially if you're if you, if one of your priorities is financial success, having somebody who's not as financially successful and being in a uh, a live-in relationship so that you can build wealth together is going to give you a much greater edge if you do that earlier so... in life than later in life. I just so think there's a misalignment I, I wanna of priorities. I want to I want to I want to challenge a couple of things. So one of them is like the idea that single women are less likely to be happy. Again, um I someone Didn't say that. Well, but so lonely. like well, uh, but right and all the but things, like you know, that why do we care lonely. right well, like being sad and unhappy right like that would be well, a side effect surely part of it is uh you know like financially thriving like i said even if you have somebody that's not uh, super financially successful having another person who's living in in the house i, I, I understand to bills i understand i understand the point that i'm trying to like elucidate here is if we're concerned about loneliness right if we're concerned specifically about these women women on average today in society have are thriving far more than they have been in the distant past. We are more likely to go to college. We are more likely to graduate from college. We are more likely to graduate from high school. Rates of teenage pregnancy have dropped precipitously. Um, rates of, uh, there are in many ways, women are flourishing today. And so to tell women that in the face of us flourishing in the 21st century, 
that we should put this on the shelf because we might be able to find happiness with some men. That seems to be, uh, <clears throat> that seems, say that. well, but I, I, I understand like every single saying, argument that I've made, you've mischaracterized and try to hold me to a, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to mischaracterize any of my arguments. I'm not trying to mischaracterize you. I'm trying to like, look at, you're saying this is the bad. I, I understand stuff you're not trying what... to, and I'm giving you, I'm taking that in good faith and trying to inform you that you are, and I have, and you've and sort of angry. like moved past that well, each time. On, like, I, I, and I'm, just right now, I'm your trying response to look at all telling of... you that you are is saying, I'm not trying to, I'm, but like, okay, you're not really I, remedying it either. Okay, well, I'm telling you bluntly, I think that you telling women to shorten their lists is not just bad for men, is not just bad for women. I think it's bad for society. That's what I, that's the short, my short response to you. I, wanna, I know Smith okay, is trying to get it. I'll yeah, I want to toss it to so Smith the, and the, Stardust, please. I don't have the, the statistics right in front of me, but I, in, I hope you can just trust me on, it's not that big of a claim. The men are way more lonely in their in their twenties, and uh, women are way happier being alone in their twenties. Then, when when you get to age thirty and and beyond, then women who who are who are not dating and, and they're they're single become way more lonely. And men who are who are single at thirty stop being lonely. Like a lot of them stop caring about dating, so it completely swaps. So. Um, the, the dating choices of women actually fuck them over later in life when they're going to wish that they actually had a partner. Yes, but like even if that's true, even if I were to accept that, why if it's do you think it's better for society at large that we encourage women to remedy that by choosing to date uh, men who they otherwise wouldn't want to be with? It's complicated. So Ooh. um so so I, like so just so really, really to, quick, need, like one sentence. Men... I'm not advocating for society at large, I'm advocating for the individual here. Continue. Well, Smith. I'm sure, advocating for society. Okay, here's, I, here's the oh, issue. No, no, no. Sorry, <laughs> let's, let's Smith go. I know that Stardust no, feels okay. entitled to interrupt you, but we're going to give it to Smith, and then we'll give it to Stardust, and we'll go. There's problems with men, and we need to fix those problems with men, but I, I think that um, the the pickiness that men are, are upset about, um, and it's, it's, I mean, honestly, if you're an ugly man, you can you can find a woman. If you are a poor man, you can still find a, find a woman. Um, it, it's It's harder and stuff. It's just that it's it's it it is possible. It's just that men feel devalued and pathetic and uh, and just unloved. <clears throat> that's that's the feeling that you have you carry with you just by <clears throat> being a man, and and you feel that all the time. And when you see women getting getting just by being a woman, having a vagina, being being pretty, putting on makeup, and then everybody loves her and gives her attention, it makes you really really hate women deep down. And that's that's what we're really talking about here. They, women do have more risk, um, but women. But but the the matter of fact is, men are stratified stra uh, on the like dumber and smarter end of the spectrum. Women are like a little bit above average in the in the bell curve. Okay, um, but and that's because men take on more risk. Okay, men 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 do risky shit. Women don't go for men that don't take. Women don't go for the the low risk average Joe guy, especially in, in when when their when their sexual selection like power is so high when they're like peak peak fertility in their like fucking early twenties and shit. They're not they're not going for they they want to get what like some guy who's like uh, taking on a lot of risk. That that's the type. And those guys are more likely to be abusive. So I th I think that there are a plenty of low risk men that women could go for that just they just don't go for. Yeah. Start us. So, okay. If I can, all right. Um there let me just read you some statistics here, okay? This is um this is 2011 statistics from the FBI, all right? Males constitute 98.9% .9 of those arrested for forcible rape. Males consisted of 87.9% of those arrested for robbery. Males cons cons uh, constituted 85% of those arrested for burglary. Males constituted 83% of those arrested for arson. Males constituted 81.7% uh, of those arrested for vandalism. Males cons constituted 81.5% uh, of those arrested for motor vehicle theft. Um, males constituted 79.7% .7 of those arrested for offenses against family and children. Um, males constituted 77.8% of those arrested for aggravated assaults. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, with these, with these statistics, that you have to think, yes, um, it, it, like, uh, you're talking, Smith was talking about, like, oh, women can just put on makeup and everybody loves them. That's not necessarily the case. Right? Also, because we should we we should hate men is what you're saying. We should hate them. We should hate men. We should yeah, not hate them. men, but 
we shouldn't hate men, but we we should be scared of them because they are so, yeah. scary. And men are more aggressive. Even, sounds so, like so you're so making a case it, that no women should date them ever. So when men, men feel bad like, because they feel I'm like they're sorry, sorry, making a case, but like, what should be okay, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Start okay, off, finish up. Everybody else, I let everybody else speak their piece. Okay, don't uh, interrupt <laughs> me, or I, I will, I will change these uh, these crime stats. Okay, I will make it a little bit more skewed in women's direction. Anyways, um, uh, so when, uh, um, when we're talking, Smith is talking about like. Uh, women can just put on makeup and they're loved. That's not necessarily the case. Most men don't even know the beginning of the amount of effort that women put into their appearance. It's like your whole fucking life, right? And you start doing it from a pretty young age. And you know that your entire self-worth is based off of your looks. Women have no is. idea no, the amount of wait, effort that finish. men have to put let in to have finish. value let in society. Finish. Smith, let me finish. I let you nothing. speak. Your, the amount of effort you need to put in to have value in society is nothing compared to the okay. amount that men have to you put in. You have no fucking idea. You have no fucking idea. Please shut up nothing. and let me finish. I didn't interrupt nothing. you. I didn't interrupt you. Go, and see, go ahead, here's an, a prime He's example. A prime example. A prime example where I let you speak and you are you are not letting me speak. So, secondly, well, then do fucking uh, interrupt me next time. Uh, that maybe I will interrupt you. Maybe I will do. I, I again. <laughs> uh, maybe I will do one of these aggravated assaults. Okay. Maybe I'll I'll, g I'll give uh, give women a little bit more percentage yeah. there. Um. Uh. So. Uh. What What I'm saying is that you know, well, like that is such a surface level criticism to have of women when when we are selecting for a partner. Again, we are going up against all of those statistics. We you know again remember that like <clears throat> one in four women have been uh sexually assaulted in some sort of manner, right? And and so. Um, um, uh, you know, uh, and and knowing that also like something like 70% of women have been cheated on, right? So we are going up against all of these statistics. It, 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 we don't want to die, right? Um, and look, I'll agree with you. When women are much younger in their early 20s and they are like looking for a guy over six feet, I think that's fucking stupid too, right? Um, that's like a, a super shallow thing. But as women get older... Um, uh, you know, I think that w women being selective about men is a good thing. And I don't think women are selective enough. I see way too wi many women who are in relationships, marriages where they never come. There are way too many women who have died without ever having an orgasm. Um, there's way too many women who are married for the rest of their lives in abusive relationships. Um, uh, there are way too many women who are doing all of the housework and all of the child work and n nothing is being done by their male counterpart. So yes, I, I do think men have it hard. Don't get me wrong, but like women have to be selective and I think they should be more selective. Okay, uh, let right. me get through these super chats before you respond. Okay, we got a few. $2 from Cryborn to say, why are so many men unattractive as partners now? Uh, $10 from Zephyr Hash. Comparing men versus women on crime statistics is like comparing men versus women in PP length. Men are always going to commit more crime, uh, but total crime in general has gone down, yet women be scared. And then $5 from Rad Wombat. I love crime stats. Men sound pretty horrible. Can Star please break those down by race so we can know which men to hate in particular? Yeah, we Jesus can break them down Christ. by race, but it's still not going to change anything. If you look at European <clears throat> statistics on crime, um, European countries where it's like mostly homogenous uh, populations, it, even then, men commit primarily most of the violent crimes. So yeah, it, it, they also you can primarily look at it. commit them against other men. These aren't these they aren't do, violent crimes that are committed from men to women. So I'm just saying problem. that decreases that decreases that the risk. You're presenting the men. risk. You're, okay, that is a problem it, it's not created a pro by men. But what I'm talking about is, sure, you're talking about a problem created by men, but you're not talking about how much of that problem is a problem for women. Well, but hang a on. Wait, wait a second. If only a third of that is directed at women, almost, almost it sounds a lot different. All, all, almost 80% of um uh you know offenses against family and children are committed by males i think it's very reasonable for women to to be cautious and selective okay. and even if it's even if that never happens alder Drossy, let me just ask you this suppose like you do marry somebody like if you're a woman and you marry a man who is a violent person but he's never vi been violent towards children and he's never been violent towards you but he gets constantly into fist fights he gets to brawls the bar he is violent towards other men is that the sort of man that you think that like, you would advise a woman that, to get married to? No, it's really funny. All the things that you have tried to point out that are like, um, like, like expectations you think I w think women shouldn't hold are ones that I absolutely do. I think that 
But I also I, think I, that people should hold these. People should not want to be with somebody who is violent, who is, doesn't let them have a voice in their relationship, who doesn't uh, value them as a person. I think that everybody, if you're going to be in a relationship, should be working towards uh, any of those things that aren't uh, up to where you want them to be, but things are good enough to where you like you want to work on them it should be a priority for you or you should get the fuck out of there so i'm all for much, everybody being as, safe and as much feeling as, safe as much in as she is speaking as much Fine. as she is speaking past you like which you've claimed that we've said she's done you are also speaking past her because you, you have to admit like you have to uh, just you just have to agree women do take on way more risk you have to yeah but th what i'm sure but i've never said otherwise so but when so I'm, it, say, so when when I'm say, saying that I'm not say saying people, that when you when you say people, what you're doing is you're smuggling in that the risk is basically the same. It doesn't matter. It's just people should make these choices. But no, actually, women. No, no, no. Should, women... that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I hold this as a value, as something that should be looked at in relationships uniformly, regardless of risk. These are the values that should be among the most important, no matter what the uh, other circumstances are. These are uh, evergreen values that you need to hold. And it is true, of course. That if, if my wife and I got into a fist fight, I'm going to fucking body her. I'm twice her size. She's a tiny little lady. Uh, thankfully, okay. I'm a pretty chill dude, and I don't do stuff like that. Um, lucky for her. Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay. Lucky, for, lucky for me. Before, you go, start us, before you go start us, $5 okay. from Testicle Johnson. Look how emotional these men are getting and speaking over women. Very interesting. Thank you for five dollars. Five um, more dollars for Rabbit Wombat. Star said she could answer I the question, but then did over that super chat. <laughs> Which race of men in the United States should we watch the closest due to their criminality? Stardust, you're up. Uh, you can look at the statistics, the statistics yourself, things. and you can see that um, that poor communities uh, tend to have the most violence, and you can you can see what uh, what what populations uh, populate those poor communities, right? Uh, which is wh who is disproportionately represented there. But again, I will reiterate my my stance that even in European countries where it is a mostly homogenous uh, uh, population, men still commit vast majority of violent crimes. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I agree with you, Elder Grazi. I think that women should be looking for for um for things in a partner that are uh, that are going to be long lasting, right? But unfortunately, even when women take all the precautions in the world to select somebody who they think is going to take care of them, to select somebody who they think is going to respect them. When when you uh, you know, so many women, when, when they become um, wives and then they get pregnant, so many of them, <clears throat> for some reason, see a completely different side of that, of that uh, man. You never know. And to be honest, you really never know when a man is going to, uh, or if a man uh, is going to become a violent if person. If I may, Stardust, you said something what? earlier. Yeah. You said something earlier that I want to interrogate. Um, you said that mm -hmm. um, men, women should pick men who protect them who are able to fight off attackers etc right yes. that's why we wouldn't want what people um, wear wheelchair so, so and then you're surprised and, gonna beat you. and then you are surprised yes. right when Those... people who are able to do violence right and who are who are mm -hmm. aggressive at doing violence suddenly are more likely to be violent in the home i mean i understand that, that... To, turn it turn it in, and use it on your pregnant wife is, Look, is that, I'm is not that saying really, that's a is good that thing, a high but I'm you saying that if if you have a what if you have women are more likely to 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 guys, pick like no, MMA no, fighters, no. people who are bodybuilders, things like that. Those are much more likely to be selected by women, right, and they're much right, more likely right. to do all these things, right? right. So like, it sounds like women are selecting the wrong people. Women have responsibility. Let, let her respond. Oh let her respond. God, You're completely women. getting dropped. Let her respond. Hold on. Let her, Smith, let her respond, please. Wait, wait, wait. The problem is, I'm not asking for a man who is violent. I'm asking a man who has the capability to protect you if something goes horribly wrong. I'm not asking for a man who is who is going out and getting into fights and is actually violent by nature. I'm asking for a man who has the capability to protect you if you're both are, are in an alley and some guy tries to uh, rape you. That's all. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is a huge difference between selecting a guy who does mm -hmm. UFC, uh, you know, as his main thing, and like uh, does fucking wrestling, and mm -hmm. and choosing a guy who is capable of protecting you. I think Smith has a good point. If you take on the agency of protecting yourself, maybe that's not as big of a factor anymore. I don't think that. I don't or, think or maybe we just have to admit women, that it's not actually about think, being protected because you could I get a gun and protect women, yourself. But I think, it's really just I think about what it comes to guns. 
I think when it comes to guns, and I think it's so funny here because we have so many men on this panel who keep interrupting and talking over me. But um, uh, when I think that when it comes to guns, actually, we should have a law where it is only legal for women to own guns, not men, because men are the ones who are doing all the gun violence. Right. So. <laughs> and I'll just just a brief like throwing this in. OK, so Elder Drazi, like women should just take more initiatives to try to protect themselves. They should have a pistol. They should have. And I agree with you. I think that like women should own yeah, firearms. Should. Right. But 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 the problem is that like especially like with the example that Stardust is is, is giving. Right. Like, am I supposed to like, have the Glock next to me as I'm breastfeeding my child? Am I supposed to carry it around with me as I'm walking and like cooking dinner? Am I supposed to carry it with me as I go out to take out the trash or when he's coming home from work? That's not reasonable, right? It's not a reasonable thing to ask. And like what Star is specifically well, referring to is domestic violence. Just give an example where he's not there and can't protect you. No, but yeah, Star is you're that worried about, about your safety. You should probably have the gun next a man to you. who is not going to all of a sudden start. No, she literally was talking about while pregnant. he's on his way home, and I'm just trying to figure out what's actually being said to me because it feels like a lot of this stuff is nonsense. Like it's not like, nonsense. Uh, uh, it is it's not nonsense. No, it's not. Living life. Okay, I can explain why it's more nonsense. dangerous. Uh, okay, like, uh, in your head, at least you know. Okay, so, so. here's the thing. Wick brought up a good point, and so did Smith. That if you are uh, a guy who uh, a big part of your lifestyle or even your job is being combative or physically aggressive, these are the Again, ones who protect you. And they're also point. going, you I'm, I'm you're not listening to me. So you, I'm going to. You gonna, didn't understand the clarification? I you didn't don't know what I'm going to say. Not, you don't know what I'm going to say. You're trying to fix something I haven't said yet. Let's clear this up. I haven't even said it. So, guys. Stardust, do you We're disagree or do you men. disagree or, or agree? Do you disagree or agree that women are more likely to date someone who's a fighter? For, uh, someone agree? who's I I don't know fighter. the statistics on that. What's well, your that's, intuition? Yes, yeah, that's, what he, that's what he wants I to know. I personally wouldn't. I don't want to date a guy who's I didn't, got, we didn't like, ask what you personally think. Habits. What's your intuition about women at large? My intuition is that most women are gonna look at a guy who spends his time, free time getting into fights. <laughs> Um, and probably not want to date a guy with multiple concussions. Um, we want so a you man think that who fighters is have capable. Wait, hard time we getting want in? a man who is capable of protecting us, not a man who has a habit of getting into fights. There's a huge difference. I can't, I can't tell. Like it just, this feels dishonest. But, anyways, what I'm saying is that if there is an issue where uh, the person who can do this is also the person that can harm you. This can mm -hmm. be remedied by taking some agency for self-protection. I'm not like saying how. How? Because you can have somebody who is less apt of protecting uh, you in general if you have more agency over being able to protect yourself. How? Now this criteria is not as important. How, how do you do that? You how, take, do you get, how do you take agency do you over actually, yourself? Do you, are you going to ask me again while I'm trying to answer you? I don't, know don't need to be aggressive. I'm just asking a question like you didn't answer it before. I just asked a question. I, I just wanted to I'm know. So, okay, I'm so I'm you can. You. He's biding time. So we can okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, I okay. Just... Uh, ask your question, Fairy Queen, and then I'll let Elder Drazi ask his question. Good? How should women take more responsibility over their personal protection? How do you think they should do that in relationships? In relationship, I... I... So in, in a relationship, by selecting for somebody that's not going to uh, be more prone to aggression, like mm -hmm. you're not going to select somebody whose career or lifestyle depends on them being like exceptionally strong or aggressive. And then you can make up for that lack of uh, protection in your partner by having, uh, having a firearm, by taking, uh, what do they call that? Like you can, you can uh, learn self-defense. Um, you can... Uh, what is it? What like uh, have like emergency plans if something goes wrong? There's a, there are steps this? you can take to make yourself more safe in pretty much every aspect of your life if it's so important, um, without yeah. having to introduce a potential threat into your life as well. So this so is I why I think this is such a silly. Uh, so I just want to go criteria. through each of the things that you just sell, Elder Drawsy. So the first one goes yeah. with finding a partner who is less likely to be aggressive, who is less likely to hurt you. I would completely agree with you. That is something that you can do. But that is yeah, like what me and Star are saying, right? That That's like why we are saying that like women should be picky and why women should be choosy. It's to try to find a partner who is less likely to hurt you in that way. No, so That's what that, Elder Drazi has been saying this whole time, too. I've been saying Star this is one of the entire – I'm saying too. this is – I have said this is an area where you should feel entitled to be safe. 
Okay. To feel safe in your relationship is something I consistently said since the beginning. Then then we're in agreement. Okay, we're in agreement. Women should feel entitled to trying to be picky and choosy in regards to finding a partner that's safe for them. I would agree with you. I think the women. But it is in contrast to the reality of what women do select for. Yeah, but that's but if but if you're going to say that, then what you are criticizing women for is for not being picky and choosy enough. For not being in this in this aspect, yes. Okay, I'm the, saying the, that the priorities okay. are misaligned. The, I dropped my fork. I'm so we won angry. the debate the, the, because the women unspoken, aren't picky unspoken, enough. Hold on. You interrupted me, Stardust. You fucking, you interrupted it. As, as soon as a man gets emotional, the women shut him down. Every single fucking time. Okay. The, 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 the thing that is going unspoken right now is when men hear this, this, this shit about um, women needing birth to be protected. Sure. Like a, a lot of men won't even admit it because they don't. We, we hate that idea. I, all men, if you've, if you've just like been out with friends and stuff, you've experienced some, something where like a, a drunk woman or maybe she's just, I don't know, like not that smart, uh, like picks a fight with a stranger and then gets her boyfriend into a conflict or something like that. Um, men, we don't want to be per- like, I don't want to have to protect. I mean, I understand I'm stronger and she's weaker. And if something goes down and I'm with her, that's what's going to fucking have to happen. But we don't want We don't want to. We don't like hearing that. We, that. So we get we get all this negative feeling when we hear that we're we're being we're being forced into like combat positions just by like by by. So we're like, what, what do I have to do? Do I have to fucking like become a fighter so that now what do I have to do? And it, it's, just, it's just like all these standards and stuff. It scares and freaks the fuck out of men. And that's so, what is happening. Here. So so a couple of things to respond to that smith so i think like and some other people have made this statement before like the vast majority of times like if something bad happens if somebody breaks into your ass you pick up the phone and you call the police you typically don't ask your husband to go down with a shotgun to try to handle it themselves so i would agree with you in that Excuse sense me? but however Wait, while that's definitely tr- how that's definitely <laughs> true happen. smith while how that's definitely true smith This is what I would counter you with, okay? There are going to be times where protection doesn't mean you have to be a jujitsu fighter. It might mean I am nine months pregnant, my water broke, and I am in extreme pain, and I need you to drive me to the hospital, and I need you to make sure that when I am giving birth and I am in labor, that no one sexually assaults me because there is no one there. And you need to bring me there immediately. Or when I pick up the phone to make a phone call to our school for our child, and the principal or the teacher isn't listening to me because they're sexist and because I'm the mom and it sounds like I'm <sighs> nagging in the phone. I need you to pick up the phone and to yell at them in your deep masculine voice and to get the, to try to advocate what is in the best interests of our child. Likewise, That's what we mean. When likewise, we I think that, I, 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 I've, I've, I've had some friends that like it when they're um, like you'll be I've been at like dinner with friends and they'll be like. They'll go, they'll go to the girlfriend, like, you need to do a Karen right now. We're not getting the service we need. I need you to pull a Karen. They're not going to do anything if I say, I need you to start shrieking like a like a crazy Karen woman, and then they're going to, like, it's, give it's, us it's, food. It's, it's not about being a crazy Karen okay. woman, but unfortunately, the reality is that because we live in a society where women are more vulnerable, women are weaker, and where women, unfortunately, are disrespected, Having someone who has the ability to command respect and to get other people to shut up and to attend to your needs <clears throat> is important. Okay. Not because I, they I, need the dis- I think women are the better bar. at getting women we, are women actually I think to, in a lot of situations have the ability to get people to attend to their needs a lot more than men. We need to I, I think we need to on, address stop. what Elder Drazi said, we, right? We do, we do in a minute, but let me get to these super chats. I know I'm prior to I'm glad I want Dragon Zogma, gang, and you need to give me money so I can get Dragon's Dogma. Okay. Five dollars from Zephyr Hash. If men should adjust to women having more freedom and taking more responsibility, then why aren't women adjusting to lower crime rates? 2024, a gay odyssey for $2, says free January 6th Patriots, sub four men talking over star. Thank you for the $2. And then $5 from Rude Mud Crab. If your man's job to protect you, he stands between you and the gun, but you take on the most risk, question mark. Um, I want to, I want to, to kind of... I understand why we've gone down the track we do, but I want to kind of rewind a little bit and maybe ask it another way, right? Um, growing up, women are told, don't settle. You deserve the best, right? You deserve a foot rub every day. You deserve the best of the best. If you don't find a man who's going to treat you like a princess, treat you like the queen you are, you don't need him, okay? You just toss him to the side. He's not worth it, right? You need someone who who is going to put you on a pedestal, who's going to make you the queen of their world. You know what men are told? Yeah, you just need to settle, <laughs> right? That's what men are told overall, right? 
So do we think that we are doing our young women a disservice when we tell them these things? Do we think we're doing them that we are setting them up to failure? Because I'm going to tell you, right, like most women can't pull a six foot four doctor who <laughs> makes 200 K a year um, for a 50 year relationship. That's just not going to happen. But most women, right. Or a lot of women, I won't say most, but a lot of women, especially young women think that's what they should be get going after. And so we have this, this uh, gap between <clears throat> expectation and reality. And I would posit yeah. that it is failing women and ten dollars from cryborn to say for dd22 thank you buddy okay go ahead start us yeah. first and then we um, can go so yeah um if i if, look i agree that um i see some of the standards that younger women have and i think that they're uh, utterly preposterous um and really fucking stupid right but um even if we talk about like okay um we put these um values into women to not settle right we still don't see that bear out in reality. We still see tons of women who are in horrible relationships. We still have, we see tons of women who are actually to worse off. To be clear, Stardust is doing Praxis and... by settling for Beckett, but continue, please. Yeah, <laughs> um, we're still, we're still, um, you know, we're still. Poor Beckett, so, she laughed. Sorry. <clears throat> sorry. One, that, Go that's on. not, one, that's well, not no, true. He's, he's, but... he's a low risk male. <laughs> So <laughs> okay, okay, wait a minute. Well, one, one, okay, one that's not true. But let me let me finish what I'm saying. Um, so, uh, so the lore. Where was I before you interrupted me, Wick? I don't know. I thought it was a funny question, too. though. Sorry, okay. my bad. We I talk, apologize. We talk about, high risk male guy. We we talk about um we talk about how women should you know lower their standards and stuff. And like again, I do agree that young women in particular, um, especially when you're like young, early twenties, and you're super hot. Like they have stupid standards, right? Um, but most of the time we don't see these <clears throat> standards that you're talking about bear out in reality. So we still see um women getting into marriages where those marriages they're actually worse off for those marriages. They have less free time. They see their friends and family less. They're way more busy, and um and uh, you know their their male counterpart um gets a cleaner as well as somebody who's bringing in an income, right? Um and somebody who who is taking care of their kids, right? Um. Uh, you know, and somebody who's doing the brunt of the domestic work. So, yeah, we we can talk about like, oh, you you shouldn't settle, right? Um, and, and we shouldn't we we shouldn't have that that standard for women. But it seems like even when we do put that we when we do instill that value in women, they still settle. They still settle for never having an orgasm their their entire life. They still settle for a man who you know starts beating them as soon as they get pregnant. You know, like uh. It just, it just, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, Wick, and it feels bad as a man, and maybe we need to change how we, um, what we tell men about settling, but I don't think we should change what we tell women about settling. I think that can settling I, is I, why. I... But women are settling that... less. Sorry. They're settling less. Yeah, well, hold on. Those one expectations are running out of One at a time. Five dollars from Parallax Dragon's Dogma because Dollar General Ragged Ass Radagast should have fun too. Watermelon Twilder loves you. Thank you for the five dollars. Fairy Queen, then uh, Drowsy, then Smeth. Go ahead. I wanted to ask you a question, Wick. So you have, I'm going to give you, yes, you. I'm going to ask, and actually, I'm going to ask you specifically this question because you asked us a question. I think it was fair. Um, you have two options. Option A, you can have a group of friends who don't really respect you. They talk shit about you behind your back and they're so not streamers. really nice. Gotcha. They're, 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 they're mean, <clears throat> right? You, you, but you could have this group of friends, right? But they're bad friends. They're not really great friends. They're not the worst friends, but they're not really great friends. Or... You can be by yourself. Which of those two options would would you prefer? Would you choose? How long have I been by myself? Because at, at a certain point, <laughs> right? At a certain point. In a vacuum right now. Right now, I would rather have, um, well, let's talk about reality. This isn't a hypothetical, right? I live in a rural area. I could be alone all the time. Or I could be a streamer. And let me tell you, you talk about people who don't really like you and talk about behind your you behind your back. That's streaming, baby. So I've already made my choice. This is where we're at. This is why we're here. We're here to make money. And thank you for the 200 bits, Mooncake. Really appreciate you. And, uh, oh, uh, she asked me to ask you if you all protect black women. We do. We stand okay. them every day. Right. But the we next, but, but, the, but the reason why I'm asking, see, that's an interesting response. I would say that it would be better to be by yourself than it would be to be with a group of friends who mistreat you and who are abusive to you and who treat you poorly and who don't really respect you. It really depends and that's on the like the, 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 honest that's the, thing, the honest thing here is it depends on how much, right? I would put up 
with a little bit of 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 mistreatment and things like that, depending on the why thing, does... rather than being alone. And I think a lot of men would, because that is our reality. It's not a hypothetical for a lot but of why? men. Their, but why? Their reality is but, alone, but, loneliness. But why? Yeah. Why would you put up with a little bit of mistreatment? Like why? Because being why? lonely is far worse. Being because of the stakes. Sucks. Well, because of the stakes, right? Because the stakes are that if you put up with somebody a little bit annoying, nothing really bad is going to happen to you. I mean, sure, you might have to deal with Bob like farting as he's like eating his nachos for the eighth time. I think time, there's a but... disconnect here. Can I? Can I? Can I try to bridge the disconnect? I think the disconnect here is for men, they don't have friendships the same way that females do, right? When mm. when it's a woman choosing between a really bad marriage. Um, or choosing to have a vibrator and get all her emotional f fulfillment from her friends, um, one is obviously better than the other. Um, uh, like if you're getting, if you're in a marriage where you are doing the brunt of the work, again, you're not getting emotionally fulfilled. You're not getting sexually fulfilled. Um, you don't even get to see your friends very often, right? Why would you choose that over being able to see your friends, being able to have your emotional fulfillment from your friends and having a vibrator? Why would you? And the principle at play here too, like when we're thinking about like why you do, why you choose to put up with like some of your annoying friends, it's because the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to snipe at you over dinner and then you'll go home and you'll be fine. The worst thing that happens, like if you settle for someone and it turns out to be a bad marriage is, is first of all, there is the huge risk of domestic violence. There is the risk that you could choose to potentially choose a partner who could hurt you, a partner who might financially abuse you there. That's a huge aspect in many marriages, but there's the other problem, which is that I don't like the idea, like from like a, a bird's eye view, right, that it's better for everyone at large for women to choose to date and to marry and to have children with men who are who they otherwise would not choose or to settle because that's the consequence. That's the consequence okay. of telling women to have uh, to do this is that it makes, it creates unhappy family structures. It creates, uh, because what happens is that now you have a par two parents, a mom who doesn't want to be in that marriage, who is resentful of her husband, who's settled with this person, which therefore creates a dysfunctional like family life for the children who now live within that marriage as a consequence of settling, number one. And number two, right? If, and th we do this all the time, like, especially like with me and my girlfriends, like we, like people rag on you for choosing to like date somebody that like is a bad boyfriend. And they do that because like, if you are seen like dating someone who is a, uh, someone who you otherwise wouldn't choose to date, it means that everyone else now thinks, oh, well now it's <clears> easier for you to date everyone else around you in the circle. It's again, well, it's yes, the problem with the men house are seen and the metaphor as a status symbol and like, I, well, men will also rag on uh, guys about their girlfriends, but they I don't feel, and this is intuition, I understand, they don't do it as much. I want to get Elder Drowsy and Smith in here, but let me read these two super chats first. $5 from Cryborn, can't put never having had an orgasm in your life on your partners. True, right? <laughs> uh, and then $5 from Turtle Emergency. To the women on the panel, what are the top three traits a man should work on to be recognized as a good potential partner? Okay, can this, I respond we, we can to push, that super push, chat? Can we I respond? Can... I need to respond to that super chat. You need, no, you, that's you're, no, no. If you're going to interrupt, no. Coming from, yes, I am going to talk over you. It's not even interrupting. I'm, I'm bulldozing typical over you. Typical okay? woman. It's not typical woman. Typical you are going to talk woman about entitlement. women coming, women orgasming. We're talking about women who traditionally, we come from a very purity culture, right, in America. Whether you, If you come from an, any fucking religious background, you feel fucking guilty for making yourself come. And the idea of even having an orgasm is a completely co foreign concept to a huge majority of women in the world. Um, oh. So yeah, there are majority of women in the world, I'm willing to say, do not come. They die. They spend their whole lives without ever having had an orgasm okay then fucking come then let's stop treating women like maybe shit. maybe we don't maybe we don't fucking uh shame women for having sexuality like, then yeah that that let's smith and i aren't advocating you're not, you're for that not... i promise you no I, i'm responding but to so the super these, i'm not so responding many, so, to smith so many so many of these these issues to me um uh, make me feel so so numb when i feel like i'm being forced to be to like to pick a pick a side where it because because it's because it's it's so confounding and multi-directional. Like, women, like so, so with the way I see it, there are two different <clears throat> camps you could put these uh, these expectations that women have in. There are expectations that are going to be for her safety and well-being and for her future, and then there are superfluous expe uh, expectations that are just because because she has the selective power, she's not going to settle for anything else, and her selective power is only going to go down, and she doesn't even realize that. she's not, like By the time she's 30, she's not going to be able to do that anymore, and then she's not going to be able to get the things that are actually going to provide her safety. So that, 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 that's, that's an issue. But 
but also women value men so women are valuing <clears throat> men for, for a lot of the wrong reasons and obviously men value women for a lot of the wrong reasons the fact that we are so obsessed with getting like like we, we are so obsessed with like fucking 20 year old women who the fuck wants to date a 20 year old woman but we 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 don't care about like them being like a lot i mean of i mean do. Like we 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 don't yeah. value them for the right reasons. So the, both of us are not valuing each other from the right reasons. Except the, the reason that men are so upset is because women have the 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 picky power in uh in 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 dating. And and they the, and, and they keep just shaming men and telling men how awful they are. Where it's a it's a it's a complex situation where it goes in both directions. The relationship <clears throat> between men and women is this thing that's it, that's wrong. It's not, not just men. It's not just men. Uh, if I if I can speak now, I had a couple things written down here because uh, a lot of people said a lot of stuff. Um, so I think that the high expectations that young women have lead to having worse standards. Like Stardust, you said, well, it doesn't change anything. So I'm saying, yeah, so maybe it's part of the problem. If we think that these high expectations are going to lead to better outcomes, but for some reason they're not, maybe it's part of the system that's failing women. So when you have really high expectations, 20 like w women in their early 20s, they get a lot of offers from very successful men that they would like to have a relationship with. They get flown out, they fuck them, they dump them, and now they go, oh, well, I just, I, I went out and met this uh, really successful guy and he uh, tossed me away. Then I guess, like, maybe these aren't the kind of people, like, maybe this whole thing is all wrong. Uh, and if that happens to you enough, then you're just not going to have those kind of, you're not going to view those expectations the same way. They're not going to develop into standards that reflect those expectations either. Um, so that seems to be uh, a thing that I've heard a lot about. I look, it's, I think you have a really weird, uh, large amount of focus on orgasms when that is also on your end as well. Uh, like you're if, the best if thing women in the aren't, world. if you, if you know that you're missing, so let me put it this way, at least if you know that you're missing out on orgasms, then, I mean, you can, you, like you said, you can do things for yourself too, or you can have a bigger We're role not talking in about purity culture though, life. right? I like we're talking, using right, so you have to decide if you want to put. A, I, I understand you either have to. You have to pick what you want. But this is what, like, it's not going to change overnight. So if you, if you use a vibrator every day. I'm not going to make you come. Orgasms. If you use a vibrator every day, I'm probably not going to be able to make you come. It's just like if you if a guy jerks off every day, you're not going to make me come. If you want me to make me come, I have to stop jerking <laughs> off. I, I'm so sick of this being like ignored. Like if if you want if you want your boyfriend to make you come, then stop fucking jerking off. And then it's I the think, same both I directions. I think the issue I here is when we wait a minute when we talk about when we talk here's here's something another interesting <laughs> statistic is that not statistic but interesting finding. I didn't come prepared with orgasm when, stats, gang. I'm sorry. I when love, when oh. it's not a stat, it's not a stat, but it, it was a finding, I believe. When when, um, uh, when men think about what what is bad sex to them, they think about um, sex where they didn't come. When women think about what is bad sex to them, they think about sex that is painful. Okay, that is a huge, huge breadth of difference between, and in, in, in that is why it's important. The fact that that when we look, when, when we think about what bad sex is, it men don't even think about sex that's painful. They think primarily about sex where they didn't come for women that is a fact i don't of believe life. that that, finding. Is a, that is that is so that is so uh, i i don't i don't believe that finding I, I, whatsoever. so, so i i i, I believe that so, so i i'll respond nonsense. to the super chat and to a couple of things that elder drawsy said uh oh, wait so, can i can i make my last point really quick i i was sat here patiently despite uh my chat giving me shit for not going in i just have one more thing i wanted to, to say that i think is really important uh Go i in. think that all, all these all these expectations that are being put on men, and not once have we pointed out that, like, what expectations can men have? If I'm expected to make $100,000, then can I also say that I don't want to date you because you're too fat? If I don't make enough money, can't you be yeah, too you fat? Because I tell you what, it's a lot easier to lose 60 pounds than it is to gain $100,000 every year. There's just a, I think that I'm men not should be more selective. My skills I agree with you, Elder Grazi. I agree right. with you, Elder Grazi. I think men should be more selective. Well, I wanted to I wanted to hear uh, Fairy Queen's response real quick. I, um, I respect your answer, Stardust. Usually that's not the response that you're going to get. Yeah, I mean, so, look, you try, uh, just real quick, you try telling a woman, like, I didn't, I dumped her because she was too fat. You were going to get a lot of flack. Whereas if well, a woman, I dumped her just because you didn't make yourself. enough money, they will, uh, like, society will be like, no, I get it. They have to be able to support you. It's, get it, Brittany no Simon. No Brittany no Simon, thank what? you for the raid. Okay. Fair enough. Women Fair are enough. not no keeping matter, it to themselves how no awful matter, men are and everything they, they hate about men. No matter what the reason for dumping somebody is, you probably should, it's probably good social 
etiquette to not tell them. Uh, you know, oh, I, d- I dumped you because you're ugly or you're fat or I stopped being attracted to you or you're not making me come. I was saying you- men at large. Can men at large say, yeah. I don't want to date women that are fat without it being contentious. Yeah, women yeah, can say can. he's a loser. I think they should be able to do that. And then attached to that, is there too high of an expectation? Can women have too high of expectations? If so, where would you and Fairy Queen actually draw the sign? You're like, all right, this chick's obviously, she just, she literally wants to marry only like the king of England or the president of the United States. I think the height thing is a really great example. There's a, the height thing is a really great example because I knew a girl um, growing up and she would talk to me about, oh, I want a guy who's over six feet. And I'm like, you're literally five one. You don't fucking need a guy who's over six feet. Guess what? She ended up, um, she ended up dating and marrying a guy who's shorter than her. So, I mean, you know, like, uh, so, yeah, I think that 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 uh, that standard is so fucking stupid, you know? So, yeah. I, I think Smith and I are both, like, 5'11", so that's just, we've we never been tall enough for it to benefit us, never too short for it to fuck with us. So, this is an alien. I just found out about this, like, recently, like, in the last two years. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I wanted to... If you, if it, I think it's fine to be into Real quick, Smith, and after Smith, be... you're done. I'm going to pass fine, the ball to Fairy Finish. It's fine to have whatever preferences you want. Um, I just, I just think that women, women, when you when you settle down, you lose a lot of power, especially if you're young, because a lot a lot of your power in society comes from your sexual uh, selectiveness and your your withholding your sexual like at- attention or even just your 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 attention at, at large. And when so when you settle down, you lose a lot of power. And I think that that is one of the main factors, because I think that a lot of women actually do find people that would be good for them that meet a lot of their standards. And they still horrifies them because settling down would be a lo- great loss of power. And I, so I think it's not just like, oh, fuck you, women. It's we, we need to like empower women so that they don't need that fucking bullshit. I'm a young pussy fucking power. Pussy. Pa- fuck pussy power. We need to empower women in real, real, real power. Hey, Fairy Queen, go ahead. So I wanted to respond to the super chat that the, I don't know who it was that paid it a few minutes ago, but I think it was the top three characteristics that like men should develop in themselves. So the first one is the simplest. It's not necessarily the easiest. It's physical attractiveness. And that means go to the gym. That's an easy thing that everyone can do. Everyone should needs everyone. I don't care who you are. I don't care how fit you are. Go to the gym, run more, lift weights, have a good eating routine, have good hygiene, like take care of yourself. That's an simple it's not an easy thing to do it's not easy you know to make yourself get out of bed every every day at five o'clock in the morning to go to spin class but it's a simple thing that you can do so that's the first simple fix that you can do to try to make yourself a more attractive and better partner the second one is quit having an identity cap a crisis and get identity capital and what that means is stop worrying about who you are or trying to figure out who you are or what it means to be you in the world and try to do things like in your life that will add <sighs> to you, try to create who you are. If that means, and that means doing things like go take that crazy internship across the country and try it out. It means try the job, go and chase the, go and chase your dreams, go get a master's degree, do things that provide a Uh, a concrete credential or that actually add and build into who you are going to be and who you want to become. Focus on getting identity capital. Identity capital, it means things like trying an internship, trying a new job, um, doing, trying a new experience that will help to develop you in some way or getting a master's or, or pursuing a higher education in some way. So that's what it means to have identity capital. Finally, have a goal or a purpose outside of getting married. So I've I think this this has been true for me. I'm sure it's true for a lot of people who've been in relationships where you are really focused. You're really, really uh, interested in your career. You are having a great time. Maybe it's streaming. Maybe you're writing a book. Maybe you have lots of friends and you're really interested. You're really excited about it. And you have a partner and your partner does not seem to have a life purpose or direction for themselves. Their whole, your relationship, their whole purpose is to basically leech off of your star. It's to hitch their wagon onto your dream and to feed off of your energy. That is a killer in any dynamic. In order for it to really work, you have to have and bank on a dream and a vision for your life that exists outside of getting married and having kids. So those, have a goal, are, have a purpose, are, get identity are, capital and physical attractiveness. But those, those are, are really good. Do. Like those are really good like advice, but like women, men, we, we can't hold women to those standards at all. Yes, you can. But they don't do it. They don't, they yes, don't, do. they don't need to. 
Yes, we do. I, I, objectively, that's not true. Uh, okay, identity capital, that's definitely not true. Women are more likely to go to college. Women are going to college at rates like in yeah, far greater numbers than ever before. Hold on, wait a second. They're more likely to get clean. master's degrees. They're more likely to pursue like jobs of higher education. Women are far more likely to pursue identity If capital. you're a man and in my former... audience, if you're a man in my audience and you won't date a woman who hasn't been to college, press one now, please. <laughs> or raise your hand. I, I probably if you're a woman in my audience and you won't date a man who hasn't been to college, please press two. Wick, it should be if you're a man and you wouldn't uh, date a woman. Uh, I think that's what I said. Because right? that's it's either that or they're just lying. I only everybody date pressed one there, is lying. There is um there is a there is a thing I want to push back on as well. One point, a small point, but this idea that women aren't lambasted for wanting a man who makes a lot of money. Uh, that's not just not true. Um, society at large calls them gold diggers. So. Yep. Women, okay, hold on, hold on. So the first one, like, go to the gym. Women are way more fat than men, like, way more. And, like, every single country in the whole world. And it's statistically, not even, like, it's, it's actually horrifying. Statistically, um, it's not <laughs> that much, actually, uh, if you actually look at U.S. statistics. If you look at U.S. statistics, most men and most women are, are overweight, yeah. Yeah, but uh, women, women are a little bit more, overweight. a little way bit more, more but, a yeah. More. A lot more. Okay. more. More women and significantly more overweight, no, is that so what you're that, saying? Yeah, so, so identity Quantity capital. and quality. I, with identity capital, I, I only care about the going to college because it just means that you're going to be like more like you've spent more time growing up. Um, that, that's the only but um, it, I don't the the the, the getting gaining of like status and stuff like that. Like, I, I don't I, I personally I don't care about like somebody's status. Uh, that, that, that seems like so. Superficial. It's not about status. What, what, what do you mean then? Identity capital, it's not about gaining status. It's about doing things in your life that will build up who you are. So we can use the metaphor of going to the gym. So I know people today who have gained weight, who are overweight, but because they spent all of their years in high school and in college lifting weights, playing professional football, and really spending it, they still have and retain that muscle mass and that strength even now, like well into their 40s and their 50s. That's what, and that the meta, and that correlates again with identity capital. It might I, be I, the case. Do you see I agree. what I'm saying? I, yeah, like I that's... agree, but it just sounds creepy because of the word capital. Would I you agree. disagree? Would you disagree with this? And this is the Stardust and Fairy Queen. Um, and and I'm I'm just really curious because I, well, let me ask a question. Men need all that all that you said. I think that men need it right to kind of differentiate themselves. All a woman has to be is pretty. That's that's literally it. That's literally That's it. not necessarily true. Oh, uh, almost. For, for sex or for marriage? For, for a relationship. To live. No. Disagree. For, for a relationship, no, that's, that's not, not true. true. To live in yeah. their early 20s, yes. But not. And, that's and, what I'm saying. Pretty. We need to. Right? There's something. There's something that we need to to also to uh, make a dis difference here, right? What, when we're talking about desire, desirability, women in general are not desiring men unless they see a long term future with them. Whereas men are willing to um, hook up with literally most women, um, if we're being real, right? Um, and so women don't want a short term relationship. There are tons of guys who are willing to have that with women, but that's not what they're looking for. We're looking for different things. Actually, um, no, in early, and in what Wick's early... saying is a man in 34 can't fail and set up shop in somebody else's life and get a free ride. Like a, 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 a beautiful woman can absolutely do that. If you say that that can't happen, uh, yeah, no, like, no. I don't believe anything you say from girl, to, I need to A young girl can do that. A young girl can do that. Yes. I, I, I need to respond to start it. So actually, it's, Very it's attractive actually to right can, now, in, I don't know about in, in the United States, Young men actually want long-term relationships, and young women don't want long-term relationships. Um, older men want short-term relationships, and, and older women want long-term relationships. Yeah, there's a flip because the young women can they can they can hook up with a bunch. They don't want to settle. Like they they gen I don't I don't think this is like a this is a self-protective thing. I I just think women just don't want to settle, and I, so young uh, men actually do want. Yeah. Uh, to, I, to I would have to look at that because I, I that is not what I recall. Um, usually men, men, when it comes to the dating, uh, dating market as a whole, men in general are happy to sleep with a, a large variety of women, whereas women are not willing to sleep with a man unless she sees a long term future with him. I just saw on, um, you know, Jessica Pinn, the 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 clitoris um, scientist woman, um, she did mm -hmm. a poll on on Twitter and she was saying uh, like women how, how 
often do have sex with a man who you don't see as a potential partner. And it was like almost all, and she had like three options. She had man that just wants to look at the poll results. So mm -hmm. that's what I click. And so the, the vast, like it was like 80% women like having sex with people that they don't see as a potential mate. Let's get some data in this. Let's get some data in this. I just looked it up. Um, so this is from a study from 2017. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. This is what they found. And this is a study involved 297 women, the mean age of 28, including single, married, divorced, as well as mothers and non-mothers. Um, mm -hmm. The study found that younger women place greater importance on finding long-term mates who show signs of wealth, potential, and can provide emotional support, a uh, sign of commitment, right? Um, these women say the researchers have the luxury of time. They don't necessarily want to partner with money now, but one with potential of doing well in the future. Older women, however, favored practicality and immediacy, placing greater value on gifts of financial assistance and domestic help from their partners. So there's some right, data. But, but what I'm saying is that women have sex with men who Makes they sense. don't actually want to like, like go, go long term. Sure, we, women when do have do sex, that. When I have sex with yes. women, I actually like, like all of them, I see a potential. I don't actually, I've never had sex with the, I, I don't think I've ever had sex with women. Never had sex with maybe, women. Again. Maybe, maybe. I, I, I think, yeah, a couple times I had Smith, a Smith, I think you're the exception. But I know I'm always looking for a partner. You're the exception. No, okay. because yes. I have to. No, because I have to. Because as a man, I don't have as much selection. So when I'm when I'm dating, I, I'm like, this this could be the one. This could be every single time because I don't have as many options. I don't have as many choices. Let me get some uh, super is... chats in here. Uh, Five dollars from Temperous Quill. Women should ditch the men and go back to living in communal families where we outnumber the men three to one. Thank you for five dollars. Two dollars from Tesla Johnson's oh, hashtag oh, deport oh. all penoids. Thank you for the two dollars. Uh, Honkler 303, a member for two months at tier two. One of my biggest regrets in life is the one time casual sexual relationship I involved myself in. Not all men want short term flings. Thank you for being a member. Uh, and fancy teeth for $20. Men have multiple opportunities to provide value, smart, charismatic, good, father, kind. Women are judged by their looks first. Broader society values that first. If you feel that one value add, you're done. Carry on, please. There's a there's a huge issue where we assume a lot about the uh the general and then apply it to all the individuals. This is what I'm saying. I care about the individual. I care about the individual women that are getting this information about the expectations where it's going to end up harming them. Like I've heard a lot of generalizations about men. People in Wix chat have talked about it. I've talked to Smith one on one and in a group about male sexuality, and there was not a single person in any uh in that larger group that we had to fit any of these molds whatsoever. So that's not how real people are. You can make generalizations, but you're going to lose every single individual in these generalizations. I so, think that when people are selecting for a romantic partner, having some romance is probably pretty important. Having trust is extremely important. Knowing that they're not going to beat the shit out of you is extremely important. Um, you should find them attractive, but you don't need to like come in your pants as soon as they walk in the room. Uh, I think that you need to make you. You should know that they're not going to be draining you of all of your money, but that doesn't mean that mean they need to be rich. There are realistic things that everybody can reasonably expect of somebody that they're going to share an enormous amount of time with, and it doesn't have to be all these insane uh, extremes that we keep on to uh, so, keep talking about and try to apply them to everybody. Everybody can kind of find a medium, and I think that's. How, why is that not what we're advocating for? Why are we so, not advocating for figuring out what you need and finding that in another person instead of pulling up statistics, which is going to impact literally nobody's decision and who they're going to date? So, uh, a couple well, of... it does impact, but yeah. Go yeah, ahead, it sorry. does impact. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so there are a couple of things. So you asked like, why we're giving general advice, and that's because this is a panel and we are speaking to the general public. We are not in the friendly neighborhood bar. You're giving advice you based on generalizations. Yeah, but to that's general, to the critique. general public, to the general public, like to the that's general public, person. we give general advice about like what it is we want for the general public. You're right. Well, it's I'm not a person. I'm not talking choices. to a person. I'm talking to the hundreds of people who will literally be watching the stream. So of course, wait, the wait, advice wait. is I going to be general. I think that makes sense. That makes so, sense if you're talking to like po like uh, like people for the sake of policy. And we're like, doing pretty good. I'm sorry, was Fairy Queen not, done speaking? Was Fairy Queen choices. done speaking? I'm sorry, was Fairy Queen done speaking? Go ahead, Fairy Queen. I was, I, I was just asking a clarifying question. Like, so I, I like are you talk are you saying that you you you're you're advocating for policy or personal choices? 
I'm saying that like when it's not even just personal choices, it's if you have a platform and you are speaking to the broader public, then the advice that you are going to give, unless you are going to provide a bunch of qualifying brackets around the specific population that you're addressing, of course, the advice that you're going to give is going to be general for the average person that walks across your channel. That would make sense. So I don't I don't accept that as like a broad critique. Number one. Uh, number two, there is something I wanted to address Elder Drazi, like regarding like um, personal choice. So like you mentioned, like these women will become sad and you're worried for these individual women who will become sad because they have these enormous expectations in their early 20s. They put it off and then they I didn't say get sad, but OK. OK. You said lonely. And I would ass- and meaning, as we as being alone, being alone, which if right? they're if they have expectations, meaning they want to date somebody so they're not being able to meet their goal. That this is what I'm talking about. It's not about being sad. But why do we care about like if they meet their goal, if like they're roughly at the same level? I can't tell you why I can't. I don't. I can't tell you why I care about people wanting to uh, thrive. I don't think that happiness is the actual metric that actually matters at the end of the day. Do you think that that single women who are who are alone don't thrive? Is that what? Do I think that single women who have the goal of finding a partner and continuously fail to find a partner are not going to uh, fail to flourish in in a way that they could be if they had different uh, priorities when selecting a partner? Yeah, I think that they're going to have I a redu- reduction of disagree. flourishing. I disagree. Well, so, and I, I and think I'm that ch- if they're and- actively not fulfilling a goal they could otherwise be fulfilling, I think that uh, this is fits the definition of flourishing. Well, let me ask less. you. So, uh, no, so I, no, I, think this is like I do want to get to my se- super chats real quick, and then I'm going to I'm going to ask you, Fairy Queen, so you'll get a chance to respond to him and me. So, um, uh, five dollars from Superpower Sensei. When, if ever? Should a man's emotions matter more than a woman's? Right now on my show and this channel, if you're liking this, right, uh, prioritize my emotions by liking the stream, subscribing to the channel. Thanks for being here. Uh, $5 from Fancy Teeth. Helping the individual doesn't help society and change things for the better, Draz. And and uh, Smith, come to Canada. Well, thank you for the $5. Um, yes, I, I, I very, can shoot my load as far as you need. Fair enough. Fairy Queen, right? What advice would you give um, to a young woman uh, or even an older woman, right? Like someone who is a woman who is failing, right? She wants a relationship. She wants to find someone. She's had a slew of bad relationships for various reasons. Like they, they run the gamut. And she asks you, right? Like, why can't I find anyone, right? Why can't I find anyone? And then you look at her phone, right? You go through, you interrogate her, right? And you, you kind of look at this. And it turns out she has dozens of people who want to date her, who want to have a relationship her, but she goes through, mm, this one's too short, mm, this one's kind of poor, mm, I didn't like the way this one said uh, uh, croissant, right? He pronounced it a really, really <laughs> weird accent, right? I know I'm being a little facetious with this hypothetical, We've all seen it. but We've only all seen it. a little. Go on, what, like, what advice other than stop being picky would you give to that person? Other than that? Um... I would ask, uh, the first question, I would have to ask a series of questions if I was met that person. The first one would be, tell me about your last relationship. Why did you break up? Like, I would ask them, like, what are the reasons, like, why you've had so many failed relationships? Like, why did you, why were you attracted to them? Like, why did so you break up? The, I would want to know that. That's my of first the, uh, the author of the article, which I uh, used it to, to start this uh, talk, uh, right? Uh, for her, she broke up uh, and dumped a nice, and this is her words, a nice nonviolent boyfriend for quote unquote not feeling the spark. Well, but here's the <laughs> issue, like Wick, and this is the issue that like Elder Drazi, I think, I think specifically, it might she, just be she, Elder to, Drazi to be clear, and, like, regrets that and is fighting against it now. That's why she wrote the article. But go ahead. Can I ask all of you, like, just a question? Do you think that you can control what you feel attracted to? Do you think to that like, extent, that's something yes. that you can change? No, no yes. not at all. No, wait, you, do, you guys don't think that? You, you can't. No, no. Wait, it's changed. I thought uh, for a long time, uh, and uh, I've had issues come up with it. I thought for a very long time I had zero attraction to black women. It just turned out there was like three within a hundred mile radius of me. I moved to the city, and that changed. <laughs> so it changed, but that wasn't my choice. Right. So I, actually, wait. I I think I, I feel like, like I have no agency. No, right, I think so- I think I think attraction to an extent, and I understand it's not entirely in your control. But to an extent, you can choose what you involve yourself with and what you're willing to uh, be drawn to, That's right? Not what she you asked. can. You can change how who. You can change what you are attracted to. You can change. Like, have you ever heard of the the? It's an acquired taste. Have you heard that saying? 
I don't think that works. It's an I, acquired I do think, taste. I do think, I do think you I've can heard cultivate that happens. Weird, that's yeah, what I don't saying. think that works with sexuality if you don't have, if, I think if you have, a, if you don't have a foot fetish, I think you can try to cultivate one, and you have like, if you try hard enough, like in the right like way, you could, you could make yourself have a foot the, fetish. Yeah. No. So, so, the, so, only so, thing, so not, the only thing you'd be doing is using another fetish and twisting it around to in order yes, to uh, achieve probably, that. Yeah. Yeah, but so, it's not so, a real foot fetish then. So, 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 so that's so, so the reason why I asked this question, right, is because let's go to the woman who you say is being very unreasonable and she keeps having all these failed relationships well if i sit down with that woman and i go to her phone and i find one of these men that she does not, is not attracted to and i tell her you know you're really entitled you're really being too picky you should just suck it up and you should just go with him well what's the consequence of that the consequence of that is that you're telling her to go and to be with somebody who she is not attracted to you're telling her to go and to be have a relationship with someone that she doesn't feel attracted to and that who she does not want to be with. That's this bad. And that's a disservice to the man, This is exactly what you it? did to everything yes, that I've is. said, too. Absolutely. Wick said there's a, a large amount of people here, and you're ignoring the totality. So every time there's nuance brought into any, like, if we zoom in on a specific thing, and look at the nuance of this thing, you zoom back out. And go, it's actually very simple. You can't tell a woman to do that, but nobody's advocating for that. He's saying there is a large amount of men here. So presumably some of these men aren't going to be fat, old, ugly chuds. And, and, yeah, but, yeah, but the and point then, like is, I said like, to you, I think that you should have some level of attraction, but maybe right. not but blowing even your if, water. But, even if, but, but the point is, Elder Drazi, even if you personally think that these women are being ridiculous and that they should be attracted to these men, that they're more that they're entitled for not being attracted because they're good enough. Like, okay, they're not schlubs. They're good guys. I don't guys. think Why they're don't being you want... ridiculous. I think they're being indoctrinated by social media and uh, just right, social pressures down, in general. Yeah, but the difficulty is, like, regardless of why they are not attracted to them, you sitting down in front of them and telling them that they are bad and dumb I for have not wanting said that? you should have some level of attraction to your partner. You're reframing it as me saying they should date well, but what they're I, not attracted to but that and is like, necessarily you, what you're happening. saying even if you i understand you don't want i know it, it's not what you mean to say i understand that like i know that you no, don't it's what think i'm actually not saying yeah but wait, i'm wait, saying think, that that is what you're saying even though you don't want it to mean that and wait, the wait. reason why i have i have dated women that i uh knew that there were other more attractive women i was still attracted to this woman yeah, if I had held out standards yeah, for the is, these men a movie star, are, who are not being selected, these happen. women do not want to be with them Wait, in their on. totality. They have rejected them in their totality. They don't want to be with them. I think That's a better, a better, especially in, in light of the way you're saying that, I think a better way to frame what I think Elder Dry's point at least should be is that women have more disqualifiers, not not like uh like yeah. this person's unattractive, but too many like, deal like, breakers. He's, like it's a complete deal breaker where like um every every person I've ever dated, like there, there's things like that I always have to like say, okay, I, I, I usually wouldn't date somebody like this, but this person I like in all these other ways, so I will. Yeah, but the I point think is, like... Yeah, when I talk to somebody, um, I have to list like three or four things and go, hey, just, you know, this, this, and this, because I know there's deal breakers right away. But I think these are reasonable ones. Uh, I don't know all the... the uh, How many dudes have bunch of deal breakers ones. about women's, um, women's body counts? I don't think there's... that most men do, honestly. <laughs> The, like uh, if you do like that. like if she's a then, virgin it means it's going to be really annoying getting her to be good at sex yeah all. but you and don't want her be... to have been with like a hundred people i don't give a right? shit no it's just probably good as long as long as as long as it wasn't a hundred people yesterday because then okay. it means the average like, guy i think that's probably... a i think hold on stardust i think that's a that that is a thing but i think that it's mostly women who are upholding that standard right I think it's mostly women who are uh, gatekeeping this from other women, right? I think that if you ask most men, right? And this is just my intuition. I don't have a study for this. But if you ask most men, um, hey, is it a deal breaker for you if you're, uh, if this potential partner has had over a certain amount of body count? Now, that's different than preference, right? Like, I know a lot of guys would preference less, but a deal breaker is different, right? A deal only breaker. A, only an is, would say, oh, we'll yeah. cut that out. Uh I think that the rise of like red pill content is actually pretty indicative, like of of men's sentiment towards women with high body counts, right? No, those, those red pills people, aren't getting any anyway, right? They they're not, they're not able to pick anything, right? They don't they're have incels. a choice. I don't know. <laughs> they're don't incels. Know <laughs> They, they can say that shit all they want, but if one of these women with too high of a body count sits on their lap and starts sexing them up, they're done, okay? They're not going to say shit. No. They're going to shut the fuck up, and they're then gonna they're going to blame, they're they're gonna blame the woman her. after the fact. Oh, fuck her. Yeah. 
They'll fuck her, well, but they won't. In, marry in this, her. in this scenario, I was definitely implying that this woman is simply trying to fuck this guy to prove mm -hmm. that he doesn't care about body count. Well, um, so here, here's a, here's a. I want to address something else that you said earlier, Elder Drazi, which was. I heard because I've heard this specific thing like on a Red Pill podcast. I think it was on Fresh and Fit. It was the idea that like you know when you're in your twenties, you can get flown out, you know, and then you can you can get you can fuck them, and then you can you can dump them. That's like what and a lot of like women in their early twenties like it does, but it doesn't happen for the average woman. Like the average woman who's like a twenty something year old in the middle in the Midwest who's going to a community college is not in the right. same boat. This as doesn't happen that had, way. But yes. that same effect happens yes. in, in in a much no. less luxurious. You the, know, aver I, the average the average woman, yeah. like in her early twenties, like might it's true, like she will probably have like a lot of older men who will approach her and who will try to initiate like a relationship or to have sex with her. But she's not. But the but she's not getting flown out to Dubai. She's not she's going not on the monastery. She's getting driven down to the next county. She's, <laughs> what I'm no, saying she's not is, even getting. Not even getting gig, she's not even getting gig monetary gifts. Like the biggest thing is maybe they go to a dinner. That's it. Like you know, especially in the early stages. Yeah. You know, my point also, is that also, when you have these high expectations that lead to that kind of behavior, it can lead to lower standards overall. No, if this no, is no, what you're seeing it. and you think that this is the norm of what these oh. guys that have the criteria that you're primarily looking for in your 20s. You know, this fucking sucks that can cause you to lower your standards across the board, which I think might be the case if we're saying that despite all these expectations, yes. women are still settling more. Yes. So, so yeah. So, the, like, I think these red pillars, like, they do, like, because women get this weird attention, it, it, it uh, I think they're like, oh, actually, why can't I get a guy like that? Like, I think that happens to some extent. But also, um, and I don't, I, I those those experiences like getting driven across the county getting flown out to fucking dubai those are the times when you get raped and killed you know that's not a good that's that's the man is exercising power over you when that shit happens that's not good it's so danger th there there are a couple of other things too that i wanted to respond to one of them is like huge focus on orgasms you can settle on that yourself so i want to address that because I think what Star is referenced to earlier is really important. So for a lot of women, the reason why they die without ever experiencing an orgasm is because they don't know what an orgasm is. They, there are many women who genuinely believe like in these relationships that they have experienced it or that they think that they've had it, but they actually have no idea. They actually have never experienced the sensation and are shocked and surprised when it happens for the first time. So simply telling them that they need to take more responsibility over their own sexuality, that's great and all. But if you don't even know for, in the first place like what an orgasm e even is, it's pretty difficult for you to do that. And secondly, in the communities that like Star is referring to, which I, I know what she's referencing here, these women don't go to the sex shop to buy a vibrator these women do not watch porn these women th this is not their wheelhouse it's heavily stigmatized within the community even for them to masturbate like and you want them to go mm -hmm. on to adam and eve and like order it like a bunch of sex toys to bring them yes to the front we door. do still want them to do that because we care yeah but about they're not going to health. yeah you're right but they're not going to do that because it's heavily stigmatized within these communities they're called they societal about names it. for doing the it. societal standards the societal standards on women are are like uh, uh, uh in those Society ain't societies. gotta know about it. Wait, wait, wait. The, we're talking about what society as a whole has standards and what society as a whole gives, a, you know, tells men and women, right? Um, when we're talking about the standards that men and women have. Society tells women in a lot of these communities that it is shameful, that it is dirty, that it is, um, that you are a whore for um, even pleasuring yourself. Well, and I know so to, many adults. You step your game up and so start proudly women, boasting your dildo so adult women, I know so many adult women who are, feel guilty even trying to masturbate without a man present. Mm -hmm. That's the culture that a lot of these women grow well, up in. If you well, pay the me dollars and 95 cents an hour, it. I can help. <laughs> Is that really your answer? <laughs> Sucks to be you. Like, uh, fuck them. Like, if, if you don't want to do it. I mean, that we should do that to men no. too, then. Like, fuck, my fuck answer the was guy. that the women who aren't you know? afraid Wait, hold on. of uh, buying vibrators should be more uh, more active in empowering women to do so. You should be more but, active in fighting the stigma. But this is what we do tell men. This is what women tell men. Oh, you ain't getting any? You can't get off? No one's helping you? Just go use your hand. That's what they're told. Why is it so 
weird for us to tell that to women who aren't having orgasms. No. Oh, because you ain't getting off? Well, shame. take care of it We're yourself. Why are we, we putting do? the onus on men, men are, to men take the responsibility wait, wait, wait for their wait, wait, lack wait, wait, of pleasure? You're, you're but when we try to put this on women, think, it's suddenly... You are fucking crazy oh my God. if you think that the standard for, for men and women is remotely the same. The amount of shame that is given to is. men for jerking off, the amount of shame that is given to men for sleeping around is completely different than what it is for, for women. In fact, for a lot, for a lot of history, women just took it as, as, as fucking uh, a fact that their husbands were going to fucking cheat on them. Okay? I don't, so, no, don't, I don't think what you let's think let's is true about men's sexuality is actually true. Let's just don't change what it is. Don't come at me with that fucking let's... bullshit. Don't come at me with that fucking bullshit that you think that men are shamed as much as women Got for it. masturbating. You know they, they are. They are not shamed. Okay. That's not what I said. Okay. And had you listened, you would be, let's you can change, fix this, but let me yell for a minute. You can fix it. Let me yell for a minute. Men can go, men can go and jerk off. But they're totally. They're not stigmatized. They're not stigmatized from jerking off. For women, uh, it is different. They are told that if you jerk off, you are unclean, you are dirty. How dare you do something like that? that? Okay, uh, let's just change it to something else then. Like, so women do, or I don't know, it's just women, but like society, we do give men a lot of like, well, you should just do this, which contradicts with everything that they're told socially around them. Like, just be more vulnerable, be more emotional. So it's not like we're just doing this to women. Like, like when, when if you're a man and you just be more vulnerable, be more emotional. That that that, that oh. like depending on what which where you're living, that that can like <laughs> okay. be really bad for you. And so, so we do. So, but hold on, wait, hold on, just hold, I, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because okay. this is just not true. Look at how society, right, treats men and jokes about men. Ha ha, look at that guy. He probably has to use his hand. Ha ha, what a loser he is. Talk about being shamed for taking matters into your own hands. Can men I are ask often, you a question? let me finish. Let boys me finish. Will be boys? Let me finish, boys right? Will be boys? Let me finish. What about this is, boys they are a boys? joke. They are considered a joke. They are a laughing stock. We mock them. If a woman I have a can't get a man, right? No one mocks her. They might. Yes, they, they might do. Her, what are you but they don't about this? mock her in the same they, they way. Do. They mock her. They mock her and they Who say when she's the last person. time you've heard wait, ha wait, ha wait, look at that wait, girl that she so does dishonest. she can't that she can't so get a man. Well, that is so dishonest. That is so dishonest. I will tell you why that's dishonest, and you're fucking lying through your fucking teeth right now, okay? Women are shamed for it. They're called spinsters. They're talk they're called old cat ladies. They're called uh women who will never get a man. They're barren, they're fucking their wombs are drying up dried up, they never had kids, and they didn't fulfill their These are all for like so super old you. women. Fuck Every you. single one of these are for really they're old women. They're also called entitled as well, which yeah, is they're called here entitled on this they're panel. Called bitches. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wick, can I ask you a question? I talked to Smith about this. Please. Um, do you think, uh, and you can share uh, however much for yourself as you want to. I'm not going to push you to. <laughs> do you think that the average uh, man can talk about their sexuality in any way that doesn't perfectly no. fit the expected norm? No. Because my... My understanding is that men don't talk to women about their sexual feelings for real, and they sure as fuck aren't honest with other men about it nope. because they are terrified of actually being open about any of it because if you are, you're a fucking disgusting pig or you're a weirdo. Anything that doesn't meet exactly what the other person you're talking to expects of you, Preach. you are you're actually the Preach. worst person in the entire world. Okay. And, and women, on the other hand, so women are yes queen. Like, oh, that's so empowering. Yes they're queen. Not. Mm, they're not. No, they're not. They are more <laughs> Boosting Dave. up women being sexual the than case. there are men. You Nobody. Are in, Zero you people are, are saying. You, 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 you want to You guys jerk are in a very niche community when you look at society to as a mommies. Whole. Society Go off, King. Never happened. Does Ever. Not treat men and women this way. Society as a whole does not treat men and women this way. We are in a very niche space right now. When we, uh, one, I need to address what. Elder Drazi said, this is not a, these are not labels that are thrown only at old women. They're thrown at women in their 30s and 20s as well. They are told that they are spinsters. They're going to grow up and be spinsters and never going to fulfill their they're purpose. They're going to grow up and be they're spinsters because it's for old people. They're never going to have kids. They're going to be old cat ladies who can't get a man because she's too whatever. Okay. Secondly, women are not yas queened over fucking sexuality. Are you fucking kidding More me? More than no men. It no happened bullshit. Bullshit. No, bullshit. The vast majority Majority, the vast majority of society shames women for sexuality, and the vast majority of society is always talking about, oh, yeah, guys, I, I totally slept with that girl. Men oh, yeah, are guys, celebrated I, you know, by society at large if they meet exactly if they, the they standard that everyone expects of What is it? If a guy, if a guy fucks a woman that is younger and very sex. pretty 
uh, to the general public, then yes. But if a man actually expresses an individual sexual identity at all, it is you are actually the worst. You fucking are person in the you world. are fucking delusional if you think that so men are literally praised I have, for having. I have sex. actually Every made a point of my content to discuss with, their friends, this with like, men. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. You are literally talking about the thing that I said is the problem. It is only when it perfectly meets exactly what society's expectation of men is. That's I have a question it. for you, Elder Drazi, the, on that to topic. This exact okay? mold, Do you think that men job. or women You're are more shamed weirdo. for being a part of a BDSM relationship? Depends what kind it is. True. Okay. It, so so if I'm in if I'm in a DDLG dynamic, I'm a fucking weirdo and uh, or, obviously uh, she's just working out her stuff. Like or she's, FLR, she, I man. might actually be participating in uh, in abusing her. Like I, I, no matter even if she's even if even no matter what the situation is, I'm always the weird one in that. There's no or, way around or it. it. Or if it's female led relationship dynamic, where now she like, now I'm a simp. Yeah, um, we're talking. So, do you we're think a man can stay niche. at home and not be made these fun are, of? These and be are the house niche. husband and not be made fun of. If you think these that, then niche. you need to get off the fucking internet problems. and touch some grass. These are niche problems. No, niche I'm problems. Men, what are you talking men, about? They're, they're talking all gonna be. You can't even you save people's wake. lives in I'm a not hospital being about a nurse. What you said, wake. I'm talking about the BDSM DDLG shit. Okay, when we're talking, yes, obviously, if men stay at home and take care of the kids, uh, um, you know, yeah, they will be shamed more than women will. Yeah. Again, it's still a situation where if you look at the studies of women uh, who actually are stay-at-home moms, they're on average way more depressed than women who are working. They're way more um, financially insecure. They're way more, um, you know, they have like way more problems, you know? The, uh, it's, not a, it's not a fun thing to be a stay-at-home parent, male or female. This is the shame or oppression Olympics happening right now, and I'm just fucking dying inside. Well, so a couple of things that I wanted to respond to. So number one, like I wanted to go back to something that Wick said earlier, which is that like for women, you know, the only thing that they have to be is pretty in order to be married. Very specifically no, married. In order to be in a relationship. Okay. <laughs> in a, okay. Can we so get yeah, one honest criticism of something that's actually been said? Where a guy, might not, said, where a guy I, might not ever marry. He's just going to string you along for eight years. Yeah. But the other side of this is, Wick, and the reason why I don't agree with you in that is this, okay? So that's true only, like, uh, so, like, I think, like, this was this is another critique Shame that I think was made of red, of red Pill, like, specifically, which is that there is this idea that all women have to be is, like, very young, low body count, and they have to be beautiful. And if you can be those things, then you can bag a, an extremely wealthy and extremely, quote-unquote, high-value man. And, like... For many men who run within these circles, that's not true. For many men, and the reason why it's not true is that if you bring, if you, if you come from an upper middle class family or from an upper class family, and it is expected within those families that you marry someone who is, I'm sorry, and it's, it, this, this is not necessarily a good thing, but it is a true thing that you date someone who is roughly within your own social circle. So if you're somebody and you are going to become a doctor, like, and you bring somebody like to the family dinner that evening, who is not, who is not going to college, who isn't really good at school, who isn't working out, who isn't focusing on themselves whatsoever, who is living in their parents' basement, you yes. will be ridiculed and shamed. Men by your have family to be as a have to be a higher standard than women. A no, woman women, doesn't have women, to have that women, same social no, class. No, 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 no. That's, that's what, I'm what you're saying. I agree, no, no, but that doesn't help your point. That, that helps mine. Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. Are you the debater or are you the fucking moderator? I'm Wick? both today, and I can be Listen, that. Okay, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if you as a man, if you go to your upper middle class family Thanksgiving and you bring somebody as your girlfriend to the family dinner, who I'm sorry, like this is this is just true, who isn't at this who doesn't have the same level of education who doesn't have the same income girl. level who hasn't worked on themselves like in the same degree as you have you will be your parents will yell at you they will yell at you they will shame you they will ask why have you brought this woman to the dinner table and this does lead into some bad dynamics but it's just a true thing uh, this is i mean i'm literally giving you the plot of the great gatsby okay there is a reason why your parents Jay will just gatsby be happy you're not gay Okay. No, that's not true. <laughs> that's what if you Pascal Dotson said. Thank you for that quip. That's what Dotson There's a reason me. there is a reason like why if you are if some if you aspire to be the king of England, you can't marry just anyone. 
and you can't just have anybody as your girlfriend. Okay, you want but most to, people aren't the fucking king of England. I agree with you this in the royal right. families, but we're right, not right, talking right. about that. Let me let me read. Let me read some of these super chats. But most people, okay. Let her finish. Finish, and then I'll read the super chats. Okay. Look, this can. I, I'm not saying this is an entirely positive fact. It can be actually be really bad and it can be like pretty discriminatory and even racist at times, but it's just true. You can't just bring anyone to your family gathering or to your friends gatherings, even as a man and to, and show off this person as your girlfriend. And they can't just be pretty. They can't just be pretty a virgin and know nothing. If you bring somebody like that to your family gathering or somebody to your friends gathering, you will be mocked. You will be shamed and you will be bullied you might have a relationship very this quickly only with that applies person, to the one percent to the type like top 10 percent it doesn't just apply it most dies, most no, it people no, it, it doesn't it doesn't no, it doesn't. Class, no, to the degree to which it would affect the average person most people aren't really going to give that much yeah, of a well, shit about it if they're satisfied think, with the woman they're bringing okay, look, along look, okay, the women, okay, the women okay five dollars five dollars from skill tree gaming is the argument the perfect is the enemy of the good i could agree with that if people would rather be alone, be alone if that makes you happier. $5 from Testicle Johnson. They say a lot of men suffer from premature ejaculation, but I say it's the women who suffer. Thank you for the $5, gang. Uh, Cryborn for $5. Again, if you haven't orgasmed ever, you can't blame your partners. You can blame patriarchal Puritans, though. Thank you for $5. And $2 from Cryborn incels the new spinsters, question mark. Thank you for two dollars. Okay. You should on. see I mean, the fucking is, weird I mean, looks that I get when I bring the fucking weirdo women over. Nobody says anything, but no, I do, no, like, it's well, but it is yeah. true though. Like it may not be true for your friend, but it's definitely true with your family. And, and to address the upper very, class, it's and, like, a very it's only the privileged take for queen. Go ahead. Not as no, 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 in, Wait, it's in almost religious, as if the generalization. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Really doesn't work for the individuals. Tuna chip. Okay. I, I I forgot one. Tuna chip for a uh, five dollar gift sub, or uh, yeah, for his sub. Everyone gets what they deserve in dating. So whoever is most discontent with what they get in life is the most entitled. Close case. Thank you for the yeah. Five that's what dollars. I'm saying. Everybody's fighting over who's 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 shamed more, and it's just like. It, I, I'm not well, like what I'm... No, but we're talking about society what society pushes on men and women and if we're and let's say let's say society pushes that okay women only have to be pretty to get a man and be in a relationship even if that were the case if you are a woman who is not conventionally attractive and trust me I've been in that bucket um uh I it is it is devastating for you because you're never valued, no matter how many achievements that you get, no matter how much money you make, no matter what you've done in your professional life, you will never be valued the same way that somebody next to you who, who is prettier than you and younger than you is going to be valued. These are the one I agree. I agree with with Fairy Queen on what she's saying um, about um, uh, about this is not necessarily the truth because I think I think plenty of middle class families would have a huge problem throw a huge hissy fit if a guy brought home a girl from the trailer park who you know uh, it, 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 who's conventionally attractive but she has a meth habit you know um, so yeah yeah don't act like you're you don't have any standards right yeah um uh yeah secondly secondly even if that That's is the case right example. again even then. If that's the case, right? Women who are even when we talk about women who who only need to be pretty or whatever, right? That fades as soon as you get old. You lose all your fucking value as a human being. Yeah. Can you name a circumstance where anybody can ever bring a meth head to their family gathering and not get shit for you, it? Like, wait, what are these examples? This, so what was what was what was said in this conversation is that women only need to be attractive. You guys didn't say anything about methods. You didn't say anything about living in a trailer. We had a relationship. That's true. How can you? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If you have period. a, like, the outliers being if they're literally, like, fucking crazy in an asylum, okay, we could set those aside. But for 99% of women, and yes, there's, it, all you have to do, you don't even have to be beautiful. I you just have to be pretty crazy. to an extent, right? Fair enough. Uh, that's a fair point, Smith. <laughs> I'll take that into consideration. But all you have to do, if you want a relationship. Now, I can't say that's going to be a good relationship. I can't say that's going to be something that's going to sustain itself. But for if you want a relationship as a woman, the only quality that you have to be is pretty. That's it. It. Okay, so Not she can have a meth habit. Wait, I, I want to say something to your guys' and credit. Live in the trailer park. Okay, I think that's Stardust fair. and Fairy Queen should both get yeah. good donations because they're going to need massages for their shoulders after the sober with how hard they've been reaching to counter 
these examples oh, all oh, night. Uh, no, it's I'm sorry. I'm not insane. the one who's delusional here who can't acknowledge. Okay, even let's say women are valued. Only you literally for... said if you aspire to be the king of you're England fucking, and then said it's not most people. And everybody earlier, but okay. one this person. Is, I did no, not. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not I'm, sorry. It, uh, I'm sorry. If if you are somebody, if if, you, if it is the reality, if it, if in this magical world where women are only valued for their looks, right? Um, and the, I, don't get me wrong. I mean, women that are that very is the, the the reverse wait, problem, wait, right? Wait, <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Okay. What I'm saying is, if you're if you're in this position, uh, you know, let's be real here. Society does value women for their looks more than anything else in their life. They value them for other things too, but their looks more, right? Even in that case, it, you as a woman should still be selective because, again, you are taking a massive risk when you choose to settle down with somebody, and you never know because, again, most domestic violence either starts when you get pregnant or escalates when you get pregnant. The number one, or not number one, but the leading cause of death for pregnant women in America is homicide by their significant others. So you should be selective. So I'm sorry, guys. That's the reality. Them's them apples, okay? You have to accept that. And I just wanted to respond to like something that like Wick said. So I would agree with you. Wait, like the take wait, I'm giving did you, you like how the girls that I love you, but women? please be quiet because I'm trying to I didn't to say number one. I said wait, leading. Wick, I said leading. Uh, I reacted Wick, myself. Wick, I agree with you that like what I'm saying, yes, uh, yes. Like what I'm saying, like does apply to people like in specific socioeconomic strata. It is a privilege take for some people to have these things, but it's not merely a privilege take. It is just it's true not. that like in some communities of people. There are some groups of people where if you bring somebody who is outside of the expected norm to your dinner table as your partner, even if they're attractive, like even as a man, like even if you bring an attractive woman, that it's not going to be enough. And a good example of this is if you're in a religious community. So I know like for in my family, um, a huge deal that's placed placed on both of my brothers, like of the partners that they want to have is, is she Catholic? That's one of the first question that's, that's asked. Is she Catholic? Does she go to church? And if my brothers brought an atheist woman like to the dinner table as their girlfriend, as their potential future partner, my parents would not be happy with that. My parents would be upset with that. It's also true that like there are aspects of um, if she was pretty enough, the mom might still be mad, but the dad would understand. No, but the dad wouldn't like it either. The, what happens no, when you that's, bring not an ugly girl? that's not true. What, is, what that's, happens when you bring an that's ugly not true. girl? Like, that's not true. So, so, men are men are like pissed off. Like, oh, oh I, I I wish I was only valued for my looks. Fuck, no, you fucking don't. It's like, th when you bring an ugly, like, uh, I'm more likely to get comments, especially like after if I bring an ugly girl to like over and and it's like uh like everybody's gonna be like oh like oh look like, oh she she seems smart or like what well, weird shit. Also, even if I bring her like a pretty girl, every, everybody's only gonna be fucking talking about how she looks. But but that's the problem. Like the problem in women's uh like women are being so picky because we give pretty th their prettiness and their their youth so much power and then they they have like so many options they're overwhelmed they have so many shitty men and they have to be so careful because we because we're valuing them like retardedly we need to stop no I, d I just i i would say the reason like why we encourage women to be picky is that like when women are not picky when they are less choosy then the after effects of them not being picky is not just bad for them individually it's bad for their families and it's bad for their friends and it's bad for their local children, communities and right? every and their children and everyone I, else around them that's why we okay. that's why we heavily encourage and push are, women to be picky it's no, because two, of those but that's, there, are, there are two worlds that we can mr moderator i think you've taken enough fucking space in this i just want to read game. a question from there, Chip, but go there, ahead. Are, there are there are two options here okay there's one there's one that i want that seems to be what nobody else is willing to advocate for but i, I would like to create a society in which women don't have to be picky because that's going to be the, the society that i'm going to be the most happy in um like but 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 the other option is we, um, we can make a society where a lot more men are are sad and lonely than than women and that like those are the two options we have I, I will just tell you like what I want for my society. <laughs> I want a society where people are married to each other who are genuinely attracted to each other and who are with partners who they feel deserves them and who they are genuinely. And I also want a society where those marriages for people who choose to have kids have happy marriages and relationships so that their kids are happy, so that their communities are happy, so that the future that they build <clears throat> together are happier as a consequence. And I think that when we tell women okay. to be less choosy, less picky, you're not just hurting those women individually. You're hurting their children 
children and you're hurting their families as well. But you're, okay. But you're now you're conflating two things. You're conflating their their like their pickiness that it's going to be self protective so they don't get like raped and killed. You're conflating that with with not even just that. How many of these issues go away if we don't accept monogamy as the them. default? How picky do you really have to be <laughs> oh if you can God. have more than one partner? I don't I'm just saying, all, all, all this all this assumes that you can only have one partner. If you can have more than one partner, maybe you can have uh you know several people meeting different needs. Uh, maybe not everybody needs to be like totally bloated with money because you have a bunch of people working together. One to woman can cuck an infinite number of men. That is true. <laughs> okay, here's the thing about that. Um, is that. <laughs> Um, men, men on uh, uh, pretty often prefer monogamy because they know who the father is of their children. They know it's them. So if they're, they have a more fun, bigger financial incentive to um, contribute and to be supportive of those children um, and be supportive of their wife because um, that wife is, uh, you know, carrying their child. Um, that is that is just the reality of it. That's why monogamy is preferred by a lot of men and by a lot of women too. That's also um, why you can plan yeah. out, you know, pregnancies and things like that. You can use contraceptive and all that, and you actually plan having children as well. It doesn't have to be like oh, like this. Just yeah, but uh, the now. reality is like again. And there's also. Um, testing. I think I think women are still seen as like a, a, a pretty um in a very property esque type of way. So yeah, I think that's yeah, wrong, and I think opinions, monogamy yeah. certainly plays into that. Didn't we just yeah. say earlier that uh the way that women uh entered into a relationship was by being sold off as property to a single man? Uh, I think that monogamy is essentially a product of uh like sexist uh. Like essentially well, women trading. I, I do. I also have a question is like when you guys talk about a woman only needs to be pretty or needs to be good looking in some way, right? How many women wait, wait, don't fall into what? that category? To what though? Uh, to what Wick was saying, enter into to a, relationship. Get, in a relationship. Yeah. How many women yeah. don't fall into the category? And all what happens them. to those so, women? All ugly. <laughs> so it, it's all relative, right? You have to be pretty enough, right? For Look, whatever the you're prettiness. Going for. Obviously, there's. Obviously, there's a bell if, curve. Yeah, if you're going you are for how lonely the guy is, like if you're going for like a ten out of ten guy, you're gonna have to to be like a, at least an eight, right? I, I think within there, two points. But there I are know. men who are Either fours way. who aim. How for did you see the women? And yeah, and then you know what? That's true, with? and they're retarded. And us men, we tell them they're no, they're retarded not. for doing that. No, we not. do. What if they make a fucking shit ton of money? Then they can do it. So that's Wait, not retarded. It's not they true. can do it. But there are tons. There are tons of men who do not make a ton of money, and there are tons of men who. You know, uh, there are tons of men who uh, feel entitled to a woman who is moderately attractive, Ta who are not very attractive themselves. Well, what if yeah. they have a heart of gold, Stardust? Well, um, I mean, like, look, uh, again, that these women who are, are probably going to be, there are plenty of women out there who are, like, not conventionally attractive by society standards who are probably... Um, not fitting into these categories that you guys are talking about. Well, Fairy Queen said you can always make yourself more attractive. They can just go to the gym. And since that's yeah, like women's can. superpower, they can just gym themselves into a relationship. Though. Okay. Okay. We are, we are we are running on to the uh, end of the show. Um, it's been a passionate project. Uh, thank you for coming. Do we want to do call-ins? How, how are we feeling, gang? How are we feeling? If, if we're, we, we uh, want to stay up from the I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> okay, then we yeah, can I cut think, it. Yeah, I think we, we gotta... Okay, so I'm gonna I'm... do go to closings, but uh, first, if you've liked this content, if you've enjoyed this content, consider supporting the channel. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're following me on Twitter to kick. Hit that follow button. Gang, I want to get Drag Dragon's Dogma too. I need a little more money to do it. Consider super chatting or gifting some subs on Twitch. That would help me. I want to play Dragon Dogma too. That's my selfish ask for you today. Okay, uh, with that, uh, tomorrow we're going to have Hutch on, we're going to have uh, Rico on, we're going to have Counterpoints on, and we're going to have uh, Vito on, and we're going to be talking about Gamergate 2, right? Uh, are games woke nowadays? Are they more woke? We're going to find out. It's going to be fun. Um, but I want to give a chance for each of these individuals to tell us who they are, where we can find them, and closing statements and we're going to start with the reverse order we went in we're going to start with stardust and we're going to work away and alder drowsy gets the last one stardust go okay um so just for closing statement right i'm not saying men don't have it hard right men are um most likely to be victims of um murders right um but these are these are 
men um, doing most of these murders, right? Um, when we look at what the risk is for women, majority of the risk that comes to women in their lives comes from uh, d their own domestic household, right? Um, usually their partner. Um, so females are most likely to be victims of domestic homicides um, and sex-related homicides. Um, the, those are the top things. So when selecting for a partner, you have to be careful um, and you have to be, you have to have standards. Um, and don't get me wrong, again, like I said, women in their 20s who are only aiming for a guy who's over six feet tall and doesn't care if he's a fucking scumbag, that's fucking stupid as fuck, right? Um, but um, uh, again, you know, there's plenty of data to support why um, women should be um, cautious of men, um, especially when we know that the le one of one of the leading causes of death for pregnant women is uh, uh, is their partners. It is it is their partners. Um, and uh, again, um, males constitute ninety eight point nine percent of those arrested for forcible rape. Uh, eighty seven point nine percent for rob robbery. Uh, eighty five percent for burglary. Eighty three percent for arson. Eighty one point seven for vandalism. Eighty one point five for motor vehicle theft, 79.7% .7 um, for offenses against Men, family yeah. and children, 77.8% of those um, uh, also um, uh, men make up 77.8% for aggravated assault. Um, so uh, so um, my, my point in saying all this is that, um, yeah, we need laws that um, empower women to own guns and not men. We need laws to, um, to make men work all the hard labor jobs. Um, because honestly, technology is the great equalizer, and um, the only thing that we really need men for is for hard labor jobs, um, and they should just do that and be the workforces of society, um, because that's all they're good for. Um, I'm Stardust. Um, you can find my my channel, uh, uh, my YouTube channel, is Stardust Streams. Um, I don't actually hate men, um, uh, I, um, but yeah. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, that that's it for me. So. Okay, thank you, Stardust, and gang. Uh, go check her out. She's great. Give her a like, give her a follow, give her a sub, all those things. Uh, I'm working I... on a video essay right now. Cool. Um, It'll be out soon. Be out soon. Uh, look forward to that. Uh, gang, I got one of the names wrong for yesterday and I feel, or for tomorrow, and I feel really bad. It's not Vito. Uh, it's a guy named Whovian. So, my bad. Aww. Um, Yeah, I know. I, I, I messed up. I was looking at one thing and I read the wrong thing. So, I apologize to both those individuals. Um, Let's go to Smash, him. please. Invite Vito. I mean, anyway. if video wants to come, he can't. But <laughs> go ahead. Um, anyway, uh, look, look. When you are like, I, I agree with what Elder Jardy said to uh, to what to uh, Fairy Queen. I uh, if you are giving this generalized, like, uh, like based on like statistics on a broad spectrum, to like what um, men like like me and Drazi, um, and I I don't know like what where Wick is from and shit, but men like me and Drazi. Um, like if you are in Northampton, Massachusetts, and you're going by the dating advice that that's like based on a broad fucking spectrum, and you're you're gonna treat good men like like absolute dog shit, and uh, so so it, it absolutely makes no sense to do this disgeneralized shit. You should be like focused on what what the people around you are like. Um, like men, I, I I don't know what to tell you. Not all men actually rape and kill people. Uh, like actually most of them don't. So, um, it's like like. I, I just don't think you should uh look I, I think we're we're so we're so focused on trying to win this fucking like war of like who has it worse and, and shit and we're not we're not focusing on actually what the issues are because the issues would have to make us be a little bit more empathetic. Um I know that I I might maybe I maybe I'm I freak people out, okay? Well I'm gonna freak you out a lot more. And when my essay comes out becoming <laughs> Max, you're gonna read it. And you're gonna shit your fucking pants, and you're gonna do. You're, you're not. You're not gonna fucking be able to stop yourself from fucking creaming all over the place. Okay, so that's coming out soon. Wait, and we're, we're shitting and coming. There. Yeah, shitting and coming at the same time. You're making a fucking Jesus. stew. Oh God. Well, I'm halfway there, Smith. Okay, gang. Uh, where can you? They find your uh, upcoming essay. Um, uh, it's gonna be on my Substack. Gotcha. But you'll see it. I'll be posting. I'll post it in. I'll post it in your, Look out uh, your for that. Discord. Look out for that, gang. Check him out. Uh, Smith, really, really appreciate you being here. Um, and as for where I am, I'm from your dreams, baby. Okay, this is where I'm from. Okay, I'm from uh, from the uh, ethereal lands of uh, the time that, uh, the land that time forgot. Okay, uh, Fairy Queen, please. 
So there are three very quick things that I wanted to end tonight's note on. Okay. And that's like, okay. Remember the title of tonight's panel was like, are women too entitled, right? Should women be encouraged to be less entitled in what they ask for? Like when they choose to date someone and me and stars position tonight was no. And there are three responses that I have to the, what uh, Elder Drazi and to what uh, Wick. Uh, well, you haven't said all of these things, but you've said some of them. Number one, okay, you cannot force someone to feel attracted to something that they do not feel attracted to. You cannot sit down in front of a group of women when they say that they do not feel attracted to these men and tell them, oh, well, Literally, that's really dumb that a you're not a person has said that. I'm sorry. Is it? Oh, is it closing statements? Wait, was I not muted? I hit, not. I hit mute on my thing. You were oh. not. You're not muted. <laughs> Almost had a Vosh moment there. Oh. Fairy Queen, please continue. Okay. So, actually, uh, I'm just going to pause right here. Okay. Elder Drazi, um, I appreciate your conversation. You know, I feel like we've had some good I back apologize and forth, for that. right? But, uh, thank you. Um, but I will say, you know, like you have interrupted me quite a bit. Um, I've tried not to interrupt you. Um, you've interrupted Star quite a bit. Um, and I dislike it. Like when I'm having a, trying to have a, and I think I've been trying to have a relatively calm conversation with you, um, that it's been met with, you know, this, um, these reactions throughout tonight. So I'm going to finish and you will finish and then we will hop off. But so the first one, okay. So you can't force people to feel attracted to something that they don't feel attracted to. No amount of sitting down in front of a 20 year old and telling her that she shouldn't want to date somebody who's six foot two, who has a lot of money, however ridiculous you think those standards are, you sitting down and explaining that to somebody is not going to make them want what they do not want. So I don't know why like you think that, like it's informing a ton of women that they feel so entitled is going to make them feel less entitled if you buy that as a premise in the first place. So I think it's doomed from the get-go, number one. Number two, this is just true. Society is better when women are pickier. Uh, society is better when women, women are pickier for a couple because when women are pickier, when women are pickier with who they choose to date, they are more likely to choose partners who are more likely to support them and to take care of them when they're pregnant, more likely to protect them. And when we say protect, we don't mean you know, going off and getting into fights at the bar, right? Or like charging the guy that comes in the front door. We mean someone who is going to be there for you when you get cancer, someone who is going to pick up the groceries, like when you're sick and you need chicken noodle soup, someone who is going to be able to help your son finish his algebra homework after dinner. That's what we mean. We mean someone who has the ability to step up to the plate and to be a responsible partner. That is more likely to happen if you push women to be picky as opposed to not being picky. And the consequences of not pushing that, the burden that is born on that is not the individual unhappiness of mom and dad. It's the unhappiness of their kids and the unhappiness of their aunts and uncles who now also have to help to take care of those kids because mom decided to date somebody who was a bad fit. And the grandparents who now have to step in. The larger community has to step in. This is the consequence of telling women not to be picky with who they choose to date. It's that they wind up creating families and or, or uh, relationships that negatively impact the people around them. And that's why we as a society take interest in the individual dating decisions that people make. It's because it's not just about you having a negotiation with another person. It's your life, all of the people in your life making contact with all of the people in their life and you choosing to come together to create a family structure together. That's why we care. And that's why we push women to be picky. And finally, the obvious point that like star has, God bless her, has pounded this over and over again. Women are safer when they're, when they're, when they're pickier. And I understand that like it hurts and it bruises a lot of men's feelings to hear the statistics about rape and crime. And I understand that nobody likes hearing that. And I understand that like the vast majority of men that I bump into off the street are probably decent people, right? Like probably not people who are going to beat me in an alleyway. But the problem is that when I am just trying to look for a partner, I don't know that. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have telepathy. I'm not... I'm not Charles Xavier. I can't see into your headspace to know that for certain. All I can do is have a list of criteria to make it far less likely that that will happen to me. Like when, if, if I choose to marry you and if I choose to be in a relationship with you. So be picky. Men, you should be pickier too. Everyone should be pickier. Everyone should have a long set of standards. If there is anything to critique, it's not that women are too entitled. It's that men need to step up to the plate and need to borrow some of the things on women's list and place it into their own priorities when they are also choosing a mate. I wish Where can people find you? Hold on. Um, at, at, Fairy, at, 
at Fairy Queens College and at Fairy Triple Underscore Queen on Twitter. Thank you. No, thank you for being here. Check her out. Two super chats and we'll get to Elder Drazi. Five dollars from Turtle Emergency. For the record, Fairy's answer was excellent. I think we men have to accept the L in this discussion. Thank you for the five dollars, but never. Okay, ten dollars, uh, ten pounds actually from RPG. Since when is it acceptable to judge group by the actions of less than two percent? Thank you for the ten pounds, RPG. And last but certainly not least. The one, the only, Elder Drazi. Go ahead. First off, I want to say that uh, my, my bad on that. Uh, it worked throughout the entire stream, my mute button. Uh, I genuinely wasn't trying to interrupt anybody. That is embarrassing to me because I was trying to interrupt Fairy Queen before because I felt like every response I was getting was mischaracterizing what I was saying. And that's when I think it's appropriate to interrupt somebody and say, hey, I didn't say that. And I'm not going to let somebody talk for five minutes explaining why something I didn't say is wrong, uh, implying that I did. Anyways, um, I don't pull that personally against you. This is, uh, this is a panel. This is a debate. That's just how this shit goes. Um, and if anything, uh, to extend an olive branch, you seem to have thought a lot about this stuff. I'm uh, hosting a uh, relationship advice show in the near future. And I am looking for co-rotating uh, guest hosts, if you want to be one of them. I look for people that have opposing positions to mine. So that way, somebody, the people that call in can get a broad uh, amount of advice instead of just a single perspective. Um, if you're ever interested in uh, being a part of that, just DM me and I'll uh, set you up on that. Um, otherwise, Mel Drazi, YouTube, Twitter, uh, all of it. Kick, all of it. Twitch. Um, Okay. Thanks, Wick, for having me on. Uh, Smith, I wish I wish you and I could have talked a little bit more on this because we have some interesting disagreements and some interesting agreements. Unlike yours uh, with everyone else. <laughs> well, uh, um, just just real quick, Smith, are you streaming after this? I argue with everybody else um, a lot. Why do you ask? Uh, so I, I can I'm rate not, in I, someone? No, I'm not. Okay. Who's streaming after this? Uh, I'm I'm so exhausted. Stardust is streaming. We'll go to Stardust. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Drazi, uh, finish your statement. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, you're good. I, I've been up for 27 hours. Uh, so I'm a little bit Jesus. more agitated than normal. Well, I have got a lot of shit going on. Uh, uh, also, I just want to say because not everybody knows this, uh, I do come from a pretty, uh, I guess, privileged position in all of this. Uh, I'm married, and I'm married to somebody that is, uh, like. Basically meets all of my preferences. Um, I like pale skin, and I met I met and married an albino woman who likes fucking playing magic and anime okay. and shit. Like fucking nailed this. So like maybe I'm a little bit biased. Maybe I don't have exactly like the best uh, perspective, and I look like me. So like super lucky person. I get it. Uh, so Your if you want to criticize anything, criticize that. Okay, huh? gang. Your wife lucky. I'm Italian. No. Gang. Thanks for being Fight for here. another day. It's been fun. I guess for me. Thanks for having us. The only la the last thing I'll say, right? Because I think this is important. It it goes beyond the relationships. It's just true in general. Happiness is a choice. It really, really is. So it's not like something that you were intrinsically born with, and unless you meet these certain standards in life that you'll never be happy. That's not how this works, gang. Our desires, our wants. What we want out of life can and are influenced throughout our life by a wide variety of factors. So never let anyone tell you that you can't change because you can. You can change what you want. If it ain't working for you, if the only thing you're attracted to is six foot six giga chads, right? It ain't going to work out for you. It's not going to go well, right? You can change what you like. It takes effort. It takes time. But you can do that. Now, you shouldn't always do that. But there are times when it would be good to do. Let's write out. We're going to go to Stardust. Let her know that uh, Wick sent you. And spam those hate emotes. Okay. All right. Um, bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you, Wick. Thank you for hosting the panel. Very much appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, yep, bye, everyone. And also, yep. I don't hate yeah. men. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Wick. Thank you, Star. <laughs> Great time. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye. bye. Hey, now that they're gone. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks. I think I made I think I made enough to get uh, Dragon's Dogma, so we'll be playing that. Um, uh, probably tonight. I'll see you guys later. Bye.